it, don't you? <laughs> Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I'm, I feel terribly sorry to interrupt your uh, lively discussions, but we need to start a structural dialogue. And um, I would uh, like to uh, start the session by asking Chengetai to explain to all of us uh, the uh, reasons why meetings in Geneva uh, are maybe favored uh, against meetings outside Geneva. So, Chengetai, please. Thank you very much, Yannis. Um, <coughs> For the meetings outside Geneva, it, they are possible, but they are very difficult. Last year, I know we had a meeting in UNESCO, which is fine because in UNESCO, they do follow UN rules and it is a UN headquarters as such. It's the headquarters of UNESCO in Paris. Uh, the reasons are as follows is that um, we have to make sure that the correct immunities and privileges are valid at the meeting location that we have because it is a UN meeting and it may go all the way up to you know even preparing a host country agreement for the meeting I mean we, we, we have to check that but um, those are the stip stipulations is that we still have we, we have to have the same conditions that we have at UN headquarters or other UN um, sites around the world Thank you, Chengitai. Um, so that brings me to conclusion that if the meeting rooms will be available in Geneva, uh, the indicated dates, we would uh, uh, prefer uh, to organize next MAG meeting uh, here in Geneva. If uh, meeting rooms will not be available, in that case, uh, we will bring this um, a question up at the one of the uh, future uh, MAG uh, online meetings uh, during the uh, conference calls. So let me now uh, move uh, to uh, the questions where we need to strive uh, make a decision at uh, the end of this meeting. Uh, I will start uh, with with um, uh, results of informal working group on themes and sub-themes. Who will be reporting on the outcome of this half-hour half session? Subi? Do Thank you, you Anus. Um, Subi Chaturvedi, India. Um, so we had a discussion and unanimous uh, consensus from across the floor and happy to report it. Um, on the main team, we believe that it should come from the floor and MAG and the, the wider community can suggest. On the local teams, they're right up there. Um, we thought that the first one could look at local policies that enable access, that addresses a lot of concerns and how um, the IGF can be more relevant for national and regional initiatives as well. Uh, the second one looks at content creation and dissemination. There are several bullet points under each of these. We'd be happy to share them at a later stage. The third one is internet as an engine for growth and development. The fourth is IGF and the future of the internet ecosystem. Uh, the fifth is enhancing digital trust and that addresses questions of online surveillance, uh, government, national, domestic, privacy, freedom of speech and expression um, and trust the core value of the internet. The sixth is looking at emerging issues and we also thought this could be an interesting uh, um, placeholder for a lot of issues that might emerge from now to until September when we look at Istanbul. Um, there were also conversation about virtual currencies in, uh, and technologies, Internet of Things. Um, and uh, the group also felt that there is a consensus on best practice sessions for each of the main teams that can address a key policy question. Thank you, Chair. So thank you. Thank you very much for uh, this. It was exactly what I was uh, asking for. Now, um, uh, let us see if uh, we, we can uh, agree on proposed uh, set of uh, themes or tracks uh, for 2014 meeting. Uh, any comments and observations? Uh, Virat? Mr. Chairman, one of the uh, 
given the discussions over the last two days on finding ways to involve and make IGF impactful um, and, an, and a place for knowledge agenda as well as um, best practices in addition to its mandate of policy dialogue, um, we thought we should pick a theme or a, uh, an issue that will uh, engage a uh, large number of governments, uh, including and especially in the developing countries, um, involve uh, businesses uh, who are deploying infrastructure um, and then writing content on top of that, uh, concerns of growth and development which are linked in the first place to having access to the net um, and uh, in view of the fact that nearly uh, well over 4 billion people are yet to be connected, we thought that the theme should, um, the general theme should reflect upon um, the issue of access and ensuring um, that citizens around the world have are online as fast as possible. Um, I don't have a specific sort of two words there, but that is one of the things that is sort of helps us uh, bring together the concerns and the discussions uh, over the last um, couple of sessions. So I understand you were referring to the overarching theme. Uh, so for the for the moment, for the moment we we haven't gotten to the overarching theme yet. Maybe we will get uh, to one and. Um, uh, in anticipation, maybe uh, I would like to ask MAG members to think what would be this one, one sentence, six words, seven, uh, as an overarching theme. If two, even better. Uh, but for the moment, please uh, keep that for yourself. We're on uh, this, the list of six proposed uh, themes for the uh, for the conference, and I, I see if there are any violent opposition uh, to the proposal. Uh, Izumi. Thank you. Um, this is not my comment or opinion, but I just picked up the one sent to the Max list, list about half an hour ago from DZ or Desri, asking if it's possible to add sustainable e-government initiatives. I just throw it to the floor. I, I have a feeling that uh, these e-government initiatives uh, are fully covered with the content creation. So that is content uh, service creation. Uh, Ms. Chen. Thank you, Chairman. Just a question about uh, of linguistic nature uh, about uh, uh, number one uh, local policies that enable access. Could we find a better language? Just uh, use one word, uh, make it more easily easy to comprehend. Like uh, uh, policies promoting access or something like that. Just for the reference. Thank you. Uh, thank you, thank you, Ms. Chen. Uh, Chen. I, I actually had more or less similar sentiment. When I was looking at the first line, local policies that enable access, uh, it seems to me that it, it is slightly uh, narrowing, maybe, the, the, the question. Because there might be also regional uh, policies or even global policies favoring access or enabling access. So if we're, uh, of course, we can specifically focus on local uh, policies, uh, but if we would omit uh, local and just leave policies that enable access, uh, maybe that would be a uh, slight, slight improvement. Just a question. Uh, Michael. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I was not part of the first drafting group this morning, and I was delighted to see the, the groundwork they, they had done, and I was even more delighted to see the final product. <clears throat> um, I was particularly delighted to see the word local 
because in the U.S. we have a very famous political saying from Tip O'Neill, who was the Speaker of the House of Representatives for many years, and he said, all politics are local, and that's where the final decisions are made on so many of these things. By local, I think we mean city, state, and, and not global. I think my biggest concern about the previous IGFs is we haven't paid enough attention to the end result of the decisions that are made at the global level. And so that's why that was such an important word. And there was a lot of discussion about that, and that's why it was put there. Um, I, I guess there, there is some ambiguity as to whether it's just city or city and national. But th the focus was to, to look at the global decisions that impact the local policies. And so I, I, I would strongly agree. I, I want to vehemently agree with what we've got. <laughs> I think also the, the future of the internet ecosystem provides lots of room for people to bring in the global decisions, whether it's the IGF, the IETF standards making, the UN process and the like. Uh, thank you. Um, Daher. Uh, thank you, Chairman. Uh, I, I also agree with, with Mike. I was part of, um, of the same group. Um, and we had this discussion about the term uh, local. And also I recall that there was a consensus to um, include uh, the word internet, so to say internet access, uh, rather than access as in some developing countries access also refers to uh, mobile access. And we also agreed to omit the word that. So, so I recall that the final thing was local policies enabling internet access. And maybe Subi can confirm that. I agree. I agree with that. So thank you. Uh, Chengita is already uh, move, moving to uh, make make a suggested change. So I have um, uh, Andre. Uh, Sherbovich. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Uh, I'd like to uh, submit a kind of a, an amendment of cor or correction. So there is no uh, uh, actually human rights related topic on the list. Of course, all of them are uh, not indirectly related to the uh, human rights, especially kind of uh, through the access, or, but I think it should be a special track, uh, uh, human rights track on the IGF. Thank you. Uh, thank, thank you. Uh, Andrew? Um, sorry, it's regarding the local policies enabling internet access. While I agree with local um, policies to enable internet access, we also have a lot of small island states that are not able to um, sort of formulate their own policies. So they depend a lot on the regional organizations. I work for the Secretariat of the Pacific Community and we sort of provide this platform and also um, um, a way to sort of help them implement some of the strategies and so I, I, I really feel that we should not include just local but because it should also have like regional and also the global. Thank you, Turkey. Yes, uh, uh, I'm also uh, concerned about, I have some concerns about uh, uh, word local, uh, you know, uh, if we are just localizing uh, some of the policies, uh, uh, we need some un uniformity, we need some international uh, awareness and uh, change of best practices probably will be the subject there. So if we are just fo focusing on local, uh, we may not serve the purpose, I would say. Uh, and also, it's, if it's if you're talking about policies, uh, why not about uh, projects? Because a lot of interesting, interesting best practices, interesting projects being done all over the world. I know a lot of them initiated in Turkey that 
uh, really uh, uh, did have a lot of impact on internet access within the country. Uh, I think uh, we are, uh, if we just talk about the policies, we may, it may not serve the purpose. Uh, one other uh, uh, team track, I would suggest uh, the social media, its impact is, is incredible. Uh, social media is a very, one of the hottest topics uh, of the recent, uh, recent years. It can, it can change the uh, politics. It can have such a big impact on a lot of things. Uh, why not put the social media as a separate uh, item? Thank you. So thank you. Um, let me uh, let me maybe uh, frame this discussion. Uh, we had a working group specifically dedicated to that, uh, with the participation of about 20, uh, 20 people. And um, the aim of that uh, exercise was to come up with uh, proposals, which are uh, already pre-discussed. Uh, in a in a sample of of the mag, and fairly big sample. It's uh, more than one one third of the mag members were part of it. That's that's the one point. The second point is uh, we cannot come up with a list of 25 uh, themes or tracks. Uh, it's simply unfeasible. And uh, until now, to my knowledge, there has been attempt in the previous uh, years. Uh, to formulate those uh, themes or tracks in a very generic manner, almost like with a one word, maybe with two, uh, which would allow then uh, to speak about many different things. And therefore, no wonder that in previous years we had one theme access, which, uh, which included local, regional, um, uh, uh, international, which included access to infrastructure, access to internet, but equally access to information, uh, which is completely different concept, uh, and that all that that theme was formulated basically with a one word. So then we had a diversity. Diversity included uh, human rights uh, expression in different languages, and and, and so on. So. In, in that respect, um, we need to strive here also to try to formulate uh, these, these topics in a generic way, uh, taking into account the uh, maybe specificity of this moment. Uh, and, and we have specificity of the moment because trust, uh, uh, surveillance issues are higher on, on the agenda than it used to be or maybe will be in the future, uh, and, and, and so on. So th therefore, I just want to appeal to you, when you make your interventions and make, make uh, your comments, uh, keep those in mind. Of course, we can put many other things uh, in it, and, and, um, but I would, I would appeal to restrain from adding uh, sort of uh, these, these uh, decorations on the Christmas tree. We have already six of them. So, uh, Patrick. Thank, thank you. I um, recently just wrote a paper on this topic, and so I, I, I'm also very uh, have a very strong opinion about this idea that, that Anji raised about local policies. And I think you can really fix it just by deleting the word local, um, because then you're going to be able to discuss all of the international context that is important, the landing rights for satellites that are, that are relevant, the, the trade issues that, that are involved in, in, uh, in, in, in connecting the next five billion, the island, uh, the island complexities. Local deals with local spectrum policy, and, um, but you know, not, the, not the broader scope that we see in the International Telecommunication Union or the, um, you know, and it may deal with right-of-way issues that are very local, but not any of the other you know, much broader things that can, that can happen on a broader scale. It's an easy fix, I think. Thank you. Um, I, was, I was told that there is a practice of humming. Would that be applicable here? <laughs> so shall, shall, we, shall we try to hum? With the, uh, those who, with the, t with the, t with the two, op two options, one option is humming uh, for the local, and another option is humming 
uh, without local. <laughs> no, Michael. I, I think I have an even easier fix than Patrick has proposed, which is to change policies to actions. So local actions enabling internet access. Because what, we're, what, what the intent was is to focus on what needs to be done in country, whether it's about local policies, national policies, or global policies. But what I don't want is a title that leaves people with the impression that we're going to focus on Geneva. And I think local actions also gets to the point that our friend from Turkey made, which is it's not just about policies, it's about practices, it's about projects. So I think this might open up to a, 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 a better, more clear title. I also would say to our friend from Turkey that uh, I, I care a lot about social media and the impacts it's having, and I think that's a perfect fit underneath uh, emerging issues. Andrit, please. Um, um, thank you, um, Yanis. Um, I, I um, want to thank the group. I like the themes. Um, I think, uh, I mean, I'm, I don't have much to add to the, the proposals around modifying, you know, the local global issues. Um, maybe next year we can have a session on local taxation of global internet companies. And, I, you know, Mike Nelson can lead that for us. Um, but uh, but that's, that's a proposition for next year. And what I'd like to, to, to suggest that we, we do this, Andre mentioned the issue of human rights. And we, you know, it might be useful to have this freshness with themes, but then to use the mechanism of round tables, which we've used at the past two IGFs, to bring together and to stock tech on some of the of the themes. So human rights would be one. Um, internet governance principles might might be um, another. So um, I think in general, my only question, but I think we can address that also through a mag organized session would be to ensure that we create space for the outcomes of the Brazil, um, WSIS Plus 10, CSTD, Working Group and Enhanced Cooperation, and other relevant meetings, that we, that we do create quite a high profile space within the IGF um, for that to, to be discussed. And then just on the social media issue, I also think that's really um, important. And, and maybe we can again looking, uh, you know, we don't have to have a theme necessarily, but we, we, we can use uh, uh, emerging issues, but there might be other ways, more creative ways of also creating space for that um, to be discussed. It is certainly a really important issue, even under content creation and dissemination. So thank, thank you, uh, Tavella. Thank you very much, Chair. Um, not very much to add except maybe to ask in um, the first theme whether we can have an element of affordable access because I think that's really what the, one of the key issues for us in the developing world is not that the access is not there in, the most, in most cases but it is the affordability um, of access that's quite an important issue. Um, I would also want to point out that um, capacity building is missing and I'm not sure whether it's a cross-cutting theme across all those or whether it's going to be treated under one of the um, themes. Thank you. So thank you. Um, I, I think that uh, affordability is part of enabling. So you, uh, if that's not affordable, so it means that, that enabling policy is not, not right. Uh, and and um, the best practices and capacity building uh, is considered as overarching and, and should be component of every of those those tracks. Uh, Bill, thank you. Uh, I wasn't uh, part of the group, so I'm somewhat loath to to be too orthogonal. But I did send a message to the email list, and I'll just uh, repeat. Uh, the main points here. Uh, again, I, I would go back to what you said, Giannis. Uh, for those who've been around for a while, the, the original practice of having fairly generic and short themes uh, was something that was arrived at by through a lot of discussion and thinking. And it was because precisely once you start to get into more elaborate formulations, everybody wants to add on their different modifiers. So 
Should access be local, global, affordable, enabling? You know, we start to, and once we start to do this, we end up with, uh, we risk ending up with uh, formulations that when people are submitting proposals, they look and they go, I can't really see how my proposal relates to this. Where do I submit it? And then there's confusion and all of that. So I think having them as generic as possible and as expansive as possible is useful. And in that regard, I certainly would not in any way restrict uh, questions of access to local policies. Uh, that's, not, that's, that's a discussion we had uh, around in, back when we were doing the Greece program in 2006. And there were folks saying all the problems are local regulatory problems involving telecommunications monopolies and so on. And, and you know, I think we've evolved since then. Um, similarly, I expressed the concern of I, last year, we used to do internet governance for development and that was, that took years to get that on the agenda. Um, I, I know I organized workshops for four years on that. And uh, finally we got uh, IG for D as a main theme. Um, and last year it, it turned into internet as an engine for growth and development. And we had a lot of workshop proposals that weren't about internet governance. They were about applying the internet in healthcare and things like this. So the, the, the themes signal to a certain extent. And we've lost critical internet resources. So when somebody wants to do a work, proposal workshop on problems in CCTLD management or issues with new GTLD program or technical standards or something like that, where do they think, where are they supposed to fit it? Are they, are they supposed to try to think about how that becomes an issue of the future of the ecosystem? Um, it doesn't pertain to the IGF. So I, I feel like, you know, I understand the thinking behind these, but there is something to be said for um, some of the original categories which were expansive and which signaled people appropriately and didn't make them think that they had to twist their proposals in order to get accepted. And I, I would be concerned about that now. So thank you, Bill. Uh, Lorenzo? Lorenzo Pupillo. I want to echo what Henriette just said before. Um, uh, we should be sure that the outcome of the Brazil meeting uh, is captured somewhere and of course probably an, uh, an ad hoc session will be good but also my question is uh, uh, what about the evolution of the internet governance model are those uh, uh, encompassing the item 4 IGF the future internet ecosystem yeah. just a question yeah. yes, that's okay yeah that is exactly what that track and, and uh, I think that this goes without saying uh, that there will be a plenary meeting uh, on the issues related to uh, all the uh, evolutionary processes uh, Brazil, uh, WSIS, uh, uh, reviewed and CSTD and, and all this, this will be uh, on the agenda of course and will be discussed, this is inevitable, so that, that is clear. Um, uh, Igor. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, um, in order, in order to, to enhance the effectiveness of IGF, I don't think we, we should avoid the precise epithet like local. Uh, in this case, uh, I think we can supplement it with the word global. If we uh, we say local policies enabling global access, uh, it, it reflects the reality. And so uh, I think we should keep uh, local. Uh, so thank you. Um, uh, Fatima. Hello. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, this is Fatima Camaronero. Uh, I, uh, I have a comment about the sub team number five. And I am not sure uh, what exactly means enhancing digital trust. Uh, personally, I prefer put the focus uh, in the internet and users. 
because who lose the, the the trust in the internet governance ecosystem were the internet end users. Uh, in my su suggestion uh, could be uh, something like restoring the trust of internet users in the internet governan governance ecosystems or something like that. Thank you. So thank you. Thank you. I, I fully understand your, your preoccupation and, and uh, share your um, point. Uh, at the same time, we, we need to f try to make a formulations as short as possible, as sharp as possible. And as you know, uh, that was uh, Mark Twain who uh, said, sorry, I did not have time to write a short letter. Because in order to write short, you need to put a lot of thinking in, in it. And, and the, the working group did this thinking and came up with a short formulation that encompasses or intended to encompass uh, all the, those things you just referred to, the, uh, the trust of internet users to the system. And um, so um, let me uh, see what uh, ICC Bases uh, uh, wants to say. Thank you. I'm not advocating um, for or against the term local, but just a few comments that might add to the discussion around that. Um, when I think of local and when I see that, I just think in the past few years there have been so many amazing uh, different national broadband proposals and also so many amazing things that different uh, groups have just taken up on their own to do in this space. And so I guess I would be hopeful that some of these proposals would uh, come in under those auspices and perhaps be compared and contrast and contrasted. And as I'm looking at this list of the six and thinking about the main theme, um, I just throw out one possible suggestion um, that's coming to, to my mind right now. Perhaps something along the lines of connecting everyone, um, because I think we're at a time where not only do we want to promote access, we want to promote uptake, we want to really expand usage but also in the multi-stakeholder model, um, we really want to connect all of the different groups and really be working together. And so maybe that's an overarching theme that can kind of sew this together or something similar. Thank you very much. So thank, thank you. Uh, I think you stepped one, one uh, step ahead of the train. Uh, on, but I... I I, I think your proposal is worth considering, uh, speaking about uh, overarching theme, all and everybody connected, or something like that. Um, so let me see who hasn't spoken yet. Um, okay, we will start the second round then. Ms. Chen. Denise, uh, I'm quite, quite comfortable with these six themes. Uh, it's not only uh, because they are broad enough to in encapsulate any uh, topics which may emerge. Uh, it also are uh, a fruit, uh, a very important fruit of our two sessions of the small uh, working groups work. It's a kind of embodiment of our efforts, so I'm quite happy with it. Uh, second point is about the local, the, the word local. Uh, I if my memory is correct, that in the early morning session, when we talk about local, actually we mean national and regional. Because we have used this uh, expression uh, in our first version. Uh, maybe, my, may I make the last attempt or try that we, can we replace local with national slash regional? I think then it can reflect the consensus uh, uh, in the room or within the, uh, the working groups. Thank you. I don't, I don't hear humming. <laughs> Where is humming? Jivan. 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 We need to somehow incorporate cross-cutting issues, and some have been mentioned. And we've uh, we've said that human rights should be somehow uh, incorporated. And it is a cross-cutting issue. 
regional is perhaps another one, capacity building is, is perhaps another one. And I think we need to have practical uh, ways of um, um, infusing those uh, and having some kind of an output come out of them. So I propose that we have, for instance, rapporteurs on those cross-cutting issues. And so, for instance, we have a cross-cutting issue on, on, on regional and perhaps for each region, one. Uh, another one on, uh, on, on human rights. And then, uh, even at the time of the proposals, for people to think of those things and to report to the rapporteurs that human rights might be taken in some form. And then we can even have, perhaps, some volunteers or others who will uh, be present during the workshops as they're being discussed or whatever the panels, uh, and report back to the rapporteur and then the rapporteur to put all together some kind of a, uh, a report for the end uh, that is for that specific cross-cutting issue. Uh, and well, as I said, like I've already proposed three of the such cross-cutting issues. Perhaps there's more that uh, could be discussed. So, and uh, second, because we've uh, already gone through to the main theme, um, I got actually uh, discussed the same thing with some colleagues about connecting. And uh, connecting everyone is really something that could be the one. We were discussing with our colleagues, with our hosts, uh, our Turkish host, Istanbul is uh, really um, a city that connects uh, both continents, it connects past and present. There's so many different metaphors for Istanbul that can, that, that can be used. And if ever there is a time of enhancing trust, of connecting uh, uh, again, of connecting new people, it is now. So connecting everyone is something that I could second uh, um, for uh, a main theme. Thanks. Thank you, Jim. Um, so we are now on the second round. Birat, please. <coughs> Mr. Chairman, in um, favor of um, having short um, and uh, general um, headers such as the one uh, William Drake spoke about and make it simpler. Um, I think the group which helped put these together based on the inputs that were provided can look at sacrificing local, but I want to say that uh, all vast majority of the initiatives, policies that go into enabling access, and we can say this from first-hand experience, are national. Uh, even to the extent of the USO funds, rural connectivity, uh, type of technology, many of those decisions, with the exception of standards that are set out by ITU to help coordinate these issues, um, no two countries, even neighboring each other, use uh, something as sort of openly defined USO fund is in a similar way. We collected $6 billion in India on USO fund, hoping to put it for phones in rural India, and we didn't need a penny from that, and now it's being used to build out a national fiber optic backbone. So we changed the law, we moved the money over. But all of these things are done, or at least vast majority of them are local. But I think to, so to address the point that is being made here, in general terms, and I think what was said in Greek was right, was Greece was right. But I think we've come to the point we can work with policies enabling internet access because many people will then know what they want to say under that. One of the things that's not happened right now is that Subi has not read out the sub-themes that come under these themes. Once those, are, those bullet points and workshops are read out, people will feel a lot more comfortable because something that they are not being able to see in these six um, broad themes uh, is already mentioned there. So if there's an opportunity to either put that on a screen or to just read it out, it'll help people um, understand that their points are not missing. I do, however, uh, want to pick up the point that was made about Brazil and BISIS and um, CSTD working group on enhanced cooperation at least three meetings before and the plenipot after. I think space must be provided for that. Um, um, a very obvious visual space in a theme must be provided. So if emerging issues can accommodate that, um, or if IGF in future of internet ecosystem can be used to put that out there, I think that dialogue needs to occur, and it should be fairly obvious what, what space is available for that. Um, uh, so I, I completely accept that point, and I think it, it would be 
unwise for us to leave this room without providing that, that space, given the fact that the meeting occurred in September. My last point about uh, a connected world, um, connected people, connected world, uh, forwards, or some such thing would certainly be a good sort of overall theme that helps uh, um, connected world, connected people, or, or the other way around, uh, around that line would be a sort of one of the suggestions for the overarching themes. Thank you. Thank you, Virat. I can only um, reiterate that uh, there will be enough space uh, to discuss the Brazil uh, enhanced cooperation uh, visas review, and that is under point four. And actually, what I hear is, uh, in reality, we're turning, uh, we're not talking about uh, two, three, four, five, six, See, uh, seems that there is a, a, a sufficient level of comfort uh, about those formulations and the only um, sort of debate we have is around uh, one um, there was a proposal about the human rights uh, uh, which uh, in in a sense might might fall un under uh, point number two um, uh, if we're talking about uh, human rights as a, as a notion, human rights access to information, then, then of course that falls under access provided that there is no internet spe specifically mentioned because internet access to internet is more alludes to towards access to uh, infrastructure if this is just access to uh, the uh, uh, policies enabling access that can be interpreted wider and access to information including human rights freedom of expression and so on so and maybe uh, uh, since we, we need to finalize this debate about these uh, uh, proposed teams let me give a try and if we would if we would um, uh, and now I, I'm expecting humming if, if um, we would say national policies enabling access uh, that would uh, cover many grounds in my view of uh, what we discussed uh, before uh, and would enlarge uh, the scope uh, inclu would include human rights notion access to information uh, freedom expression and so on so I, uh, I hear very noisy humming as a sign of approval, right? <laughs> <laughs> Lee, you're expert in human rights. Mm -hmm. Your body language says you are in agreement? Yeah. No? Please explain why. I mean, you know, I, I was very happy to lead, uh, to lead into chat and to work with the colleagues today and yesterday on this grouping and uh, I think we did a great job. But then we have to find ourselves in these in these titles. We have to propose things. I mean, you know, that that's the next step. So if you do, we find ourselves in these titles. When I look at local policies, I don't see I don't see human rights. I don't see the issue of freedom of expression. I don't see the issue of privacy, surveillance. And if the words are not there in the, in the in the titles, then I think we have to be quite careful about these particular words. If you want it to be cross-cutting, put a seventh one and make it cross-cutting. But otherwise, if we don't find ourselves in that work, we may not propose things thereafter. That's my concern. Uh, Subi. Thank you, Anis. Um, I think this came as a response from the inputs and the synthesis paper that we received. And after the first meeting in the morning, we hope to respond to the essential values, access, diversity, openness, permissionless innovation, universality, and freedom of human rights. Um, I think as a point of clarification, the way we framed these six themes, uh, there were sub-bullet points under each of these, affordability, local, national, regional initiatives, um, and under the second, we were looking at human capacity building, local content creation, distribution, hosting, multilingualism, under engine, um, internet as an engine for growth and development, we wanted to respond respond to innovation, stable economic policies, using internet for development, women in ICT, um, infrastructure for broadband access, 
under the future, we wanted to respond to IGF Way Forward. Um, one of the proposals was also to look at amplification of the impact of IGF and also response to other parallel processes. Um, and the fifth one, when we look at enhancing digital trust, we felt that the core issues were online privacy, surveillance, cybersecurity, freedom of speech and expression, and how they can be amplified. And also the second interesting variation of internet as a response to social and cultural interaction and engagement. The last one was to look at emerging issues that we wanted to park. And as, as an um, offer and a commitment, uh, we, we proposed to write a short paragraph explaining each of these themes, which small bullet points so that people know where to park their proposals and how they can reach out and connect with these teams. So we please. I think um, knowing the landscape and knowing all the events coming through this year, and I'm involved in many of them, it's a lot about the governance of the internet rather than the governance on the internet. So it's about the, it's about the actors, the ecosystem, etc. And that's about the of rather than the on. And so um, we talked to people, different actors from different stakeholder groups have been mentioning whether you talk about human rights or expectations or reliance or people. And the questions of, sovereign, uh, the questions of surveillance when I, look at, when I look at the issues that are coming through at the European level, for example, it's cyber hate, it's data sovereignty now, um, it's also cryptology and anonymity. These things don't resonate necessarily with those, those, those words. I'm not trying to uh, go uh, move away from this. I think it's a very, very good, uh, it encapsulates many things, but one has to find oneself. Otherwise, there's a risk that if you don't see, those, if you don't see yourself in it, you will not propose something. So. Um, there's, 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 a need to, there's a need to think about the, the, the governance on the internet, the societal transformations, the, the question of culture, the social application layer, which I think is not always there. This is a lot about the governance of, rather than the governance on. And it's not covered by local, local policies and access necessarily, and neither by digital trust. I mean, digital trust rings of things, but it doesn't tell the whole story. So uh, there's, there's a great assumption in this room that we understand what each of those words means, and we have different, different ideas. It, depending on how much we understand the, the, the landscape, if we're involved or not. So there's a, there's a, one should never assume too much here. We should get the, really the right words right now, rather than later. So the, the question might, just to finish by saying that this doesn't uh, preclude anybody sending uh, proposals in which don't necessarily fit into these six categories. But, but by creating this landscape, um, how do we fit those together? Um, I I agree uh, with you on the point uh, that increasingly we will be talking about governance on the internet. In other words, uh, how we use the internet. The time when we're talking about governance of the internet, uh, critical resources. So I see that um, uh, we barely find it in, in these six, six points because it is important but uh, it is overwhelmed by uh, the issues related to actual use of internet. So that that is. Uh, but when I when I think about uh, those six points, I would I would say for me, most of them, if not all, relate governance on the internet, not of the internet. Uh, especially if we take away um, internet from the first point and talking about access in general. So uh, that, that relates uh, very much uh, of issues of use or, or availability of uh, uh, services and so on. Uh, the same content creation and, and uh, dissemination. Uh, internet as an engine of growth. It's, it's obvious the, how you use internet uh, ra rather than how you uh, dig the cable uh, from point A to point B. Um, the same trust. Trust is a question of use of internet, and, and so again, I do not want to uh, impose my my views. Uh, I'm in totally in your hands, and that is your uh, collective decision and wisdom. I'm just uh, uh, trying to find find the middle ground from some competing opinions. Marilyn, please. My question um, is one, it is a question that I just would like us to consider. Um, we have not talked about the um, open forum categories, 
but each of the um, IGOs and uh, even governments can schedule open forums and it may be that some um, reports from um, activities such as uh, the CSTD itself, the working group, or other um, groups like that might also be an accommodating place to put some of the um, um, more detailed um, reporting out on activities that are relevant and I'm thinking in particular about uh, number four and the mention that uh, Virat made of the CSTD working group. So I just wanted to sort of park that issue of what opportunity the open forum um, uh, might also provide for more detailed discussions on uh, some of these um, or more informative as opposed maybe to discussions on some of these these areas. Thank you. Uh, thank you, uh, Mathieu. Thank you, Chair. Um, perhaps, I um, don't want to confuse the situation anymore, perhaps hopefully helping a little bit. The original um, text was where local access meets local policy. Um, and I think, uh, to your point, I think it's entirely reasonable to think that we might want to think about access in its broadest sense, and we could remove the word internet. What I think is most important here, though, is retaining the term, the, the word local policies. Um, the, for the many of the reasons that have already been mentioned, but also because it will very nicely dovetail into what I hope is going to be a renewed focus on best practices. And it would be very nice to see a best practices session on specific local policies for enabling access, whether whatever form of access that may be. Thank you. So thank you, Vlada. Thank you, Anis. I'm trying to put myself in, in the shoes of someone who is not in this room, someone who we want to, to apply for workshops or whatever sessions, and they see it for the first time. I'm not sure they would, they would know, as Lee said, what they should, they should, that should fit in. Where, sh where should they put their, their topic, if it is missing or not? So anyhow, whatever we put in these couple of words is not enough. We need to focus on sub-teams, and that's a part, integral part of this decision that we are making today. So I opt for shorter and more general things, and keeping access or access policies and then underline focus within the sub teams and then we say special focus or encouraged uh, focus on local policies and then focus on other sub teams because we basically came to this based on the inputs in the first round of suggestions by, by people so we need to provide more details for people to make it to make a space and find their, where they are, and even space for those that cannot recognize. Uh, and this should be short and sweet. Uh, and one more comment in the second one. I think initially there were, there were uh, ideas to be content creation and uh, management. And I would keep it content policy or something like that, so to allow this, this aspect not only of creation and dissemination, but also content policy, content management aspects, which were also raised. Thank you. Thank you. We need also to, to keep in mind that there will be uh, sub-teams and those, those will be published. All those sub-teams will be uh, listed uh, in, uh, in the document uh, that we will put uh, online uh, and that will inform the, um, those who will file the application for the, uh, for the workshops or for, for the event. Uh, Robert. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I want uh, to support my colleagues. I believe that uh, protecting human rights should be among uh, the uh, main uh, tracks because uh, human rights uh, violation is happening around the world. And this, in my opinion, uh, the main threat uh, to the integrity of the Internet. And uh, one more point. Uh, naturally, we need to talk about local or regional access policy because we need to um, uh, explore, uh, to explore uh, the best, uh, we need to learn uh, from the best practice. Thank you. Practices. So thank you. Uh, Peter? Thank you. I, very shortly I'll try to, uh, I, I agree with the uh, 
uh, about uh, the, the statements about the details and the sub themes, and I hope that we are going to finalize the sub themes. My question is whether it's, is it going to be a finalized list or is it going to be a moving target uh, which will expand or we, which we'll, we are going to restrict? Uh, one other thought about uh, uh, issues of disabilities. I, I'm not really sure that we have uh, disabilities included in any of the uh, main themes or in the sub-themes. And the final point about the overarching theme, uh, with all my respect to Nokia and uh, to Microsoft, probably uh, uh, those of you who are old enough uh, can remember the slogan of Nokia connecting people. <laughs> uh, uh, thank you. I, I, I think the disability question or, or, um, uh, is fully covered with access. So if, if, we, if we remove internet uh, in front of access, so then it's fully, fully covered. We have something from remote participants. Yes, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, Adam Peek would like to um, to share a comment that he didn't have the opportunity to make this morning prior to the break, so this is a little bit out of the topic. I don't know if um, this is about workshop evaluation, may I? We, we will have next okay. uh, uh, part of the session about workshop evaluation. I think that that would be then appropriate. Uh, Michael? Just a few very quick comments. Um, since we have had a few proposals for the overarching title, uh, I'd like to put forward connecting east and west, south and north, particularly given the place that we're at in Istanbul. Um, with regard to how specific our titles should be, uh, I think we've hit a very nice balance. Uh, if we just have single word titles, as we've had in the past, content, access, there's, you could you could submit anything, and quite frankly, several proposals would fit underneath two or three different topics. I think we we've got very good, effective titles that people can match their 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 concerns to. My favorite two words are innovation and technology, neither of which are in either of these titles. But I'm sneaky; I can fit them in several different places. And I would argue human rights is a topic that certainly fits underneath two and number five. Um, I would, uh, let me finish by saying that uh, I would like to propose a, a, a new title for the first one um, and see if anybody hums. We've heard people say that they want to see best practices focused on. And I, I would propose the title be Practical Actions Enabling Internet Access because we've heard discussion of how we need to go beyond policies. I know that I hear about the confusion between local and national and regional. If we say practical, I think we will, by inference, focus on where things are actually happening, which is at the national and local level. I don't hear any humming. You, you are not alone. I didn't hear either. But we, we, it seems that, that uh, there is no uh, humming culture in this group, uh, at least not yet. <laughs> uh, Constance. Thank you very much, Chair. Uh, just uh, very quickly to address Peter's comment, um, in the written description of each of those six main sessions that Subi just um, uh, talked about, we will add explicitly uh, the best practices forum so you will see them. We have not forgotten them. Thank you. Uh, thank you, uh, Susan. Thank you, Chair. Um, I'm concerned that the, the second theme reflects an imbalance, which could be corrected by adding one comma and one word. Um, the com uh, and that word would be use. Um, I think that content creation, dissemination, and use would reflect a, a more balanced um, approach to that topic and also allow for uh, an important counter um, part to that discussion, which is uh, 
limitations and exceptions to the consumption of content creation. <laughs> So I think that, that that would help us a lot if uh, we, we would uh, get used to humming. Uh, Anna. Thank you. Uh, well, uh, uh, I'm a bit confused. I don't know if if, uh, if I'm right, but uh, on the first one, I'm not sure if I understood the, the, the title. Are you going to keep internet access or not? Because I totally agree with what uh, uh, you you just said that internet is too infrastructure um, oriented, and that's not the point. Uh, we have uh, uh, Bill, Andrit, and then uh, remote participant. Okay, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, something Lee said I think really resonated with me. Lee, Lee Hibbert, uh, which was pers people have to find themselves in the titles. I've been on dozens and dozens of uh, program committees for conferences over the years. I'm actually sitting here planning a conference in Singapore while we're doing this, <laughs> so I'm <laughs> I have my head in it. And uh, it's one thing if you are doing a top-down exercise where you. Uh, the program committee, the organization that's hosting, has a defined agenda that they're trying to get people to come together around and discuss. But the whole point of the IGF, in my understanding, is that it's bottom up and that people from around the world can bring any kind of topic that they think uh, is relevant to internet governance and submit a proposal. I'm looking at the list of workshops that we received last year. And I'm telling you, at least 50% of them would not have fit any of these categories. And so I'm just concerned about that. I'm concerned about uh, if we start to get into a thing where we're going to over-engineer this. Because we think issues about local ISP costs are important, will define the main themes for what everybody else should submit in a way that signals that. And we'll limit people who are doing something else. What about all these people who submitted proposals last year about how multi-stakeholderism works or should work? Where would they submit, where would they put their proposal down? Um, I could go through example after example. Hmm? Four, the number four, then that is an incredibly broad catch-all that means almost nothing. Um, it, it, they should not have to get a user's manual and read through a detailed list of subpoints to be able to figure this out. I, I think we are making this overly restrictive and overly complicated, and people will struggle to figure out how they shoehorn what they want to do into what the MAG thinks they should talk about. And I don't think that's the function of the MAG. Well, uh, with, with all respect, I think at the beginning you were talking about broad representation, uh, broad topics, and then when it comes to four, you said it's too broad. But, but um, or I misunderstood you. Four is completely amorphous. That's different from broad. Okay. And that? Thank you, um, Chair. Thank you, Yanis. Um, I, I think that um, you know we we're probably beginning to go around in circles a little bit. I think once we see those themes in context, uh, with with the descriptive um, sections beneath them, it would be easier to to strike the right balance between the headings, the overall subject descriptions of the themes and then the the elaboration on what they they mean so so i don't disagree with you bill but i think there's a way of of of, of dealing with that keeping it open enough but also fresh and specific enough and 
for example, I have not seen the description uh, or the sub bullets, but I would say that um, looking at digital migration and spectrum um, management is a really important issue at the moment under access because there's a process going on in many countries which is being dominated by the broadcasting industry and, and internet access is just not featuring sufficiently. So that's an example of what I'd like to see in the access theme. Um, I like Susan's um, um, uh, addition. But my, my real intervention here is to, to pick up on what, what Council of Europe, what Lee Hibbard said, and which several other speakers have echoed. And that is, is human rights. And I, I, I like Jivan's idea of using um, round tables, I'd, I'd also proposed it. But I think we need to be very careful about sending a strong message that human rights and the discussion of human rights in the internet has a very high profile in the IGF. So I think while you can see it uh, definitely and it will cut across those issues, when we do the program paper it needs to be there because it took a long time for us to, to reach consensus within the MAG that we can have a main session on human rights as we did last year or a round table as we did in the previous year. So it needs to be there and I think it sends a message. Um, there was a period in the IGF's uh, um, life about three years ago where the Human Rights Council was more progressive in dealing with the internet and human rights that the IGF was. We then rectified that, so we shouldn't backtrack. It is about messaging. I'm happy with using a crosscut um, as that um, device, but it needs to be, it needs to be um, very prominent. And then we could similarly also uh, have a cross-cut on um, evolving landscape of internet governance. You know, or, or Jivan had other proposals which I liked, even development. But then just to flag that if we are going to use the device of cross-cutting themes, um, capacity development was another one, we need to make sure that we have a mechanism for them to report into the IGF process. And I'm not sure that emerging says, uh, issues might be enough. So does that mean we need a taking stock? But we, we just need to, to keep that um, into account. If we are profiling some of these cross-cutting issues as cross-cuts, we need to create a space for them to, to report in. And then just finally comment, Marilyn, um, on the, the open forums. I think it's a good idea to have those open forums, but I think what the IJF should also do is not just CSDD, or Net Mundial um, presenting their take on their events. We want to create a, a high profile space where the internet community can have critical debate and discussions on those events and their outcomes. So we need both. So thank, thank you, Annette. Uh, indeed, you're right. We're uh, getting a little bit in circles, but I, I felt that it would be important to have this exchange of views that, that, that uh, some kind of uh, uh, rough consensus would crystallize uh, about it. And, and what, I, what I see that in reality we're, we're uh, turning around the, the formulation of the first point and the second one, uh, which has been mentioned a number of times, explicit uh, reference to human rights. Uh, and I wonder whether uh, since uh, time is running and that would be very uh, important for us to uh, get this rough uh, uh, consensus and agreement on uh, these uh, themes and ideally also the, the main theme. Um, maybe I can, I can ask uh, right, right now those who are very much interested in, uh, in, in, in this topic uh, uh, join Lee and try to formulate or, or based on what, what you heard give it an attempt in formulating uh, point number one uh, and uh, maybe something about human rights and then come back and in the meantime we would go to the uh, we would go to the uh, uh, next item is evaluation and uh, uh, and methodology of selection would yeah. Number number one, I, th I think that I, I did not hear uh, disagreement on on two, three, four, five, and six. Could you could you take a microphone? It would seem more logical to somehow incorporate human rights within number two on content or within enhancing digital trust and rights, I mean, digital rights, digital trust, something like that, rather than saying, because access issues and human rights issues are different. Uh, 
um, may, may be you're right. I'm, I'm just uh, saying that I, I hear recurrent uh, reference to human rights as explicit reference uh, in, 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 in those teams. And I would like, uh, again, reiterate, Lee, would you be ready to take up that uh, task right now here in, with a smaller group here and try to, to agree those who want to go to help them? Uh, Fiona, you, you cannot go because you will be reporting on the next point. Yes, thank you. On that point, if it, it helps, I think what some of the feedback are getting from people is if these are the themes or a variation of themes we're going to go with, then it links to the workshop proposals and people might not be able to see their workshop proposal on that topic. Maybe an easy way to do that is just when we do the um, proposal application, we include an other box for people to check that we can then evaluate and see where it fits to deal with the issue that I think the bill was raising. But I would have no concerns with the themes that are up there or your proposal to finish fleshing them out. So thank thank you. Uh, we will we will see what uh, what the the uh, group will come up. Uh, the remote participant comment on this specific issue. Remote participant comment on this issue, please. Thank you. Um, it's it's a comment from Veronica Kratu. Uh, she would like to say that she agrees with the proposed uh, main themes and tracks. However. She would like to echo uh, Lee's concerns and she proposes that there is a clear list of issues, sub-themes identified uh, that are formulated for each proposed theme in order to be also uh, able to provide more clarity on what is expected from the potential workshop proposal uh, applicants. Uh, otherwise, all the overarching themes must come under a separate point with a clear description detail. and. Um, she also um, she also would like to propose an overarching theme that would be IGF at, at the crossroads, which, according to her, resonates well with the place for the meeting and the whole spectrum of issues it is addressing today. Thank you. So thank you, Veronica, for those proposals. The, the last one uh, fits perfectly in point number four. Um, that is about crossroads. Um, while while group is uh, uh, trying to get consensus on on point number one and human rights issue, let us move to the next uh, item that is uh, evaluation and selection process. If uh, you could change uh, put on on the screen, so uh, Fiona, if you would be so kind to introduce uh, the final version, uh, and you all of all of you should have uh, email that. Um, Fiona send, send out uh, that describes um, the uh, proposal. Please. Go. Yes, thank you. So the email went around um, right before the lunch break, so hopefully everyone's had a chance to take a look, um, which I think reflects the consensus proposal of the group. There's just a couple of points to explain in terms of the stylistic presentation. So the text in yellow are things that the whole mag needs to do, that the workshop proposal group wasn't working on but is, needs reflected in this exercise. And then we went ahead and tried to put in, based on the timeline that Yanis provided in red, what the deadlines or dates would be to fit in with, with the timetable you provided. Um, so basically we're dealing with three stages. The f yeah, the first stage is an initial screening. So once the proposal or the request for workshop proposals goes out, it'll go out with a deadline, it'll go out with the criteria, all the description of what's going to happen to people's proposals so they know what to look for when when the deadlines will be. Um, the Secretariat will do an initial screening of the proposals when they first come in and then evaluate them based on the four sub-bullets that are below. These first three were from the um, IGF last year. The fourth one is a new one and there was a significant discussion around limiting the number of proposals that could come from any particular institution or an individual. You'll see that the, um, so the fourth one, fifth one, sorry, you'll see the number three is still in brackets. There was not no agreement on whether it should be three or two in terms of which should be proposed, uh, what the limit should be. So I bring that back to the group for cons uh, consideration. Uh, there was no suggestion to be more than three. It was three or three or less. There was also an agreement that MAG members themselves shouldn't be able to submit proposals, but obviously institutions associated with MAB, MAG members would not be prohibited. So that's the first uh, step in this process. So the Secretariat would do sort of a quick vetting to make sure that all this was addressed, and then send something to, to the MAG list um, by the week of April 1st for MAG members to consider. Um, the, uh, the discussion also um, 
was about whether or not we should be able to help people fix proposals. So in this uh, effort, if the Secretariat's recommending the proposal is insufficient, they would identify those, and MAG members could take a look and figure out if there was a way to mentor someone or help them uh, revisit their proposal to address this issue. Then the next stage is the actual evaluation process. So this will, this will get back to the consideration, the criteria for evaluation or for consideration. So MAG members would be asked to score a proposal based on one through five, with five being the highest. The checklist of factors are just things to think about. We would not be evaluating per line element, but these are just things to think through. Um, we've addressed the issues raised by Subi and others in terms of identifying people, and we've also um, identified the addition from Matthew about having the workshop proposal specifically identify the problem or question that was going to be addressed. Um, in this part of the exercise, the Secretariat would distribute the proposals to MAG members um, in an anon anonymized fashion, so MAG members wouldn't know who the proposer was, but it would be indicated if the proposal was from a developing country, so people were sensitive to that. That was a request that was made. And again, the, the reason for doing this evaluation this way is to rank order to scale to the space availability of the venue and practicality of multiple sessions. Um, you will notice there's also a line that if someone gives a proposal a three or less, they actually take the time to identify the deficiencies in the proposal. This is important for the next step in terms of going back and helping people learn what was uh, done incorrectly or how to uh, grow and advance a proposal next time. So the next stage is what happened at the May 19th, 21st meeting. The MAG members would uh, be given a week before a compilation of the scores and the proposals. Uh, at the meeting itself, we would talk through those things. We would look at the, the categories or themes, make sure each theme was equally represented if that was appropriate, and then take a look at the five or ten proposals that were sort of below this threshold and see if there was a way to fix them uh, based on the deficiencies. Those proposers would then be contacted by the Secretariat with an explanation as to what the deficiencies were, asking them to resubmit um, some additional text. And again, MAG members can be available for coaching if needed. And then if the proposer actually responds, the expectation is they would get a slot in the, in the schedule. And then this would allow the final schedule to be published on June 30th. Uh, in the discussion we actually went through, we eliminated the concept of an appeals process as such, but the May 19th through 21st meeting actually allows that appeals process concept to happen in the full mag. So this was the proposal from the group. So thank, thank you very much. And, and uh, if we can go maybe uh, one, by, one by one, uh, that, that proposal, there are three steps proposed, and uh, if we can examine uh, one by one, in, in detail. So um, the first is initial screening uh, based on um, no. Sorry. Let's let's start start from from uh, higher up. Uh, there are uh, evaluation sort of uh, criteria, selection criteria, uh, which are uh, fairness, transparency, inclusiveness, practicality, and efficiency. So uh, any objections to those? Uh, uh, criteria. Izumi. Where about the relevance to the internet governance uh, we used to use? Hi, I'm sorry. This just wanted to point out that the those five fairness that's those are the principles for developing the evaluation procedure um, when you're discussing the selection criteria they're under the stage one that's right may I may I take that this is uh, roughly agreeable so thank you we can move on now to the first uh, first step as described, uh, initial screening. Uh, are there any objection that Secretariat does uh, of initial screening, seeing whether proposals are uh, relevant or not, based on, uh, again, uh, the criteria which are described? So body language says fine. Uh, unresolved issue is how many uh, proposals one organization can submit. Uh, for the moment, uh, there is uh, three, uh, meaning not more than three. Uh, Marilyn, you have opinion about that? 
I do, and I was probably one of the people that was most concerned about this. Um, I had originally thought that it should be um, two to three to four. I, um, I do think it has to stay under, uh, it has to stay really very much in that vicinity, but I really wanted to comment on this um, idea that MAG members shouldn't um, submit proposals, but the institutions that they're affiliated with um, could. Um, I hope that means that that, um, that total number is also applying to the institutions, so that anyone who's submitting a proposal, whether they're an individual, which I hope, or group, or association, or blah, blah, blah. I would ask the room, but I think it has to be under four. Some of you are more experienced than I am, although I've read every workshop proposal ever submitted, um, but not had to evaluate them. Um, but it definitely, three to four sounds right to me, and I know from the small group that three was the ceiling that you had recommended. But since I had taken it up, I wanted to comment. So thank, thank you. My understanding also is when if we're talking about number, that uh, applies to everybody across the board, being organization or uh, small or, or, or big, and and uh, or individual. Uh, Paul, please. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Yanis. Um, I, I agree, and, and that was uh, indeed the discussion that we had this morning. Uh, I was one of the people that asked for the number three to be put into brackets because I myself, after having done this a few times here in the MAG, uh, believe that three is, is, is quite a large number. I was pushing more along the lines of two um, because I believe that any one organization could probably focus uh, on one or two main things they can contribute to this, to this uh, forum. I believe we need to give a, a chance to some of these organizations that haven't had uh, a chance to submit here. And I think that lowering this number uh, will possibly uh, get us to spread out a little bit more instead of concentrating on what we've seen with, with the possibility of repeat offenders. Thank you. Uh, uh, thank, thank you, thank you, Paul. I understand you favored uh, two, but you can live also with three, right? I, I see you agree with me, uh, Izumi. Oh, thank you, Chair. Um, for the number, yes, I also like to see it as two instead of three. Uh, I can live. On the the next one, the MAG members will not submit proposals. Um, I have some reservation about this. Uh, of course, depending on what are the basis of this, that should be well uh, shared or articulated. Uh, there are different class or type of MAG members. We are very diverse. Some of them are usual suspects. Others are not necessarily. They are new. And so limiting, and there are ways to circumvent anyway. Write the proposals and put the name and the email address of your friend or whoever. That's about it. So, to me, it's rather if we restrict the numbers of proposals anyway, then that can be applied to the MAG members, or to, to go to furthermore, maybe only one proposal per MAG members. But I don't see it's a problem. Combined with the suggestion by Fiona that the there will be evaluation team will be separate from the. Um, appeal team and stuff like that, that one way is that a member who submitted the proposal would refrain from becoming an evaluation. That's one way to put it. So thank you, Fiona. If you would uh, clarify a little bit. Uh, I, from my side, I uh, would like to say that there was discussion yesterday about potential uh, conflict of interest in the uh, looking into retrospect uh, to our experience in the past uh, uh, IGF, so I think that that, that motivated uh, this proposal. But Fiona, please confirm that. Yes, thank you, Yana. So in the discussion this afternoon or, and this morning, we've eliminated the appeals process per, per se, but it uh, evolved it to be a full MAG discussion, the, the meeting of uh, May 19th. And I think um, and there are others that spoke to this very strongly. Um, they, they felt it was really important that MAG members themselves, for this, you know, the basis of neutrality and clarity, not be submitting proposals. This was a very strong sentiment by many people in the group, but others in the group should speak to it. 
Um, and there was actually no disagreement about this statement, but very strong support for this limitation on MAG members. If, if, I, may, if I may ask you a few decibels lower uh, the, your emotions, please, in that corner. Thank you. Uh, Vlada, please. Thank you. And for, for warning them as well. Uh, <laughs> No, uh, just wanted to say that uh, the fact that it will be, for instance, two, will not prevent organizations to co-organize with someone else. So someone else will propose, and the organization will be a co-organizer, whatever. And people will always find the ways, and that's we can't really stop it. The point is that we send a clear signal that you can't go beyond certain level. So I would keep two. I think uh, two is fair enough, and they'll find the ways to be somewhere if they want. But two is fine. Okay, maybe we need to, to look for humming again. Uh, so, um, uh, hum, hum, Hamid? Hossein, Hossein. It's just an idea. Uh, some we, can, we may accept four for consideration, but only two would be, or three, would be accepted uh, in the final stage. But Because it doesn't mean that they uh, submitted three the three, uh, the three would be accepted at the end. Am I right? So I, I think, uh, Fiona, please. Yes, this idea was also discussed in the small group, and the challenge is that because the MAG is reviewing the proposals in an anonymous fashion, we don't know who submitted what. There would be no way to actually go back and do that exercise. That's why there was a decision to actually put a limit up front. But we did discuss that option as well. Uh, okay, Paul. Um, I guess, thank you very much, uh, Yanis. I, um, I'm supporting the statement made by Fiona that the group was very much indeed supporting that MAG members do not submit proposals. Uh, I myself was, was one of them did, that did support that. I don't think it sends the right message uh, outside. I think it may send a message that looks like this group has some kind of uh, privilege for being here and can submit proposals and people could perceive that as proposals being accepted because we are here as a group and some of us, some of us know each other fairly well. So for the sake of transparency and fairness and letting people not have to talk about this, I think that this is a, a very good uh, conclusion. Thank you. So thank you, Wendy. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Chair, since I don't think my hum was recorded, I just wanted to uh, express my strong support for uh, the limiting the number up, up front um, and uh, I think encouraging people to prioritize their own uh, selection of submissions down to two is a valuable way of helping the MAG uh, ensure that it's looking at a diverse set of participants. Thank you. I think that in every every uh, country in the world, uh, the uh, proverb um, uh, "good things come in three resonates. And uh, maybe based on this uh, uh, long-standing collective wisdom, uh, we could we could agree on three. Uh, and the mag uh, members, individual members, uh, would uh, be encouraged to abstain from submitting uh, proposals uh, at the same time organizations mag members uh, work uh, in uh, would uh, uh, be encouraged or not would not have any uh, specific limitations in in this respect so can we go with that with that type of formulation and understanding I, I see humming <laughs> And there is, at, at the end of the uh, room, there is a request for the floor. Unfortunately, I cannot see with, if you would please go ahead, but please tell, tell me uh, your name. Because, sorry, it's too far. Merci, President. Thank you, you. Chairman. Can I Please, can I do my speech in, English, in French? Okay. 
Merci beaucoup. Je suis Kossi Amessine du Bénin. I come from Benin, Kossi Amo. I am in favor of uh, having the members of MAG not submitting any proposals. I'm also in favor of that the non-submission of proposals by members of MAG would not be imposed on the institutions. And I would like to suggest the following. The three proposals that are accepted do not focus on the same issue. For each institution, we have different issues so that these institutions or structures do not appropriate a single issue. Thank you very much, Chairman. Thank you very much for this proposal. I think there's a difficulty with the last proposal that you made, because if an organization is a technical organization and would like to look at two issues that are close but actually different, then this would be imposing a restriction that, in fact, is not really justified. But I think that if an organization or body th that is a big organization with a diversified mandate, like UNESCO, for example, it would be quite appropriate to ask the organization to look at the issues that fall under different agenda items. Thank you. On to the first, uh, to the second stage, uh, since we have agreement on the first one, uh, with um, uh, with um, a limitation of uh, three uh, proposals. Uh, and uh, the MAG members would not be encouraged to uh, submit, but uh, organizations they represent uh, certainly would be. Uh, now, the second uh, stage is evaluation process. Evaluation process, if you could scroll down. Cengetai, if you would come back to the meeting. So we have uh, evaluation process uh, based on uh, uh, clearly defined considerations, uh, uh, scoring one to five, and that would be completed by May two. Any comments, objections on that proposal, on that part? Could you? Scroll down a little bit. That slow, slowly, that people can can uh, go through again if needed. Slower, slower. Michael. Thank you very much, Chairman. I just wanted to emphasize that uh, it is better to put the remote participation as a one of the criteria for the evaluation. As uh, even if you're talking about uh, you know number of people attending the the workshop, so we should also consider remote participation, a number of people uh, you know attending the workshop remotely. As uh, I think from the last year, we've got very nice. Uh, um, you know, results uh, of our remote hubs working outside, and uh, the same about number of people attending the workshop. So I, I, I think it's it's necessary to put there as evaluation criteria. Thank you very much, Chairman. Uh, thank you. Uh, co remote comment. Thank you, Chair. Uh, this is Veronica with a bit of a delay. She'd like to add a comment uh, about the issue um, on the issue of the workshops. She agrees that uh, there has to be some limitations uh, on the proposed two, three proposals from the same organizations might be indeed a good way to go. On the other hand, what is more important to her is that the same organization do not bring the same 
experts or panelists for the two or three workshop that they are going to organize. What is also important is that the format of the workshop they are going to organize differs from a workshop to another. And she agrees with your idea, um, Chair, uh, Mr. Chairman, um, of having three as a maximum number. Thank you. So thank you. Uh, any comments on this on the second stage? Virat? Uh, one clarification, uh, Mr. Chairman, you said the MAG members will be discouraged from, I think it's disallowed, right? But who decided that? And the second one is relevance of topic to internet governance or to the themes of IGF 2014? Because internet governance, it would be difficult to judge because everybody can believe that they are submitting something which is important, but we have themes and that's why we went through that exercise which would be public um, well in advance of this. So should we just think of that? So thank you. Uh, Fiona, would you like to comment? Yeah, I, I think that's a, a worthwhile edit to consider. I don't think the group meant to limit it in any way whatsoever. So I think if the edit is to say relevance of the topic to the 2004 IGF themes, I think that's fine. And I've also added in the remote participation about suggestions. Okay, Netherlands, please. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, Arnold van Rijn, Dutch government. Um, in this model, I think we, we end up with kind of a ranking. I remember uh, last year uh, there was such a ranking and then an arbitrary line was set. Uh, thereby, I saw that uh, there was one proposal from a certain uh, uh, party who uh, didn't uh, get uh, to the selection because the, issue, oh, oh, it, the project itself was uh, dot three point too short. So how can we prevent to, to have an arbitrary line set uh, to, to, to prevent uh, such proposals, very good proposals, not being selected? Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Arnold, for, for the question. Uh, the, I think the answer is in, in stage three. There is a mechanism in stage three. We will come, come back. Uh, to that remote uh, no it's not um, okay we have I think accommodated all comments thank you for for those inputs and we can move to stage three and that is discussions appeals if needed and finalizations and in this stage uh, which uh, we would uh, conclude during the on-site meeting Tentatively 19th to 21st of May, tentatively in Geneva. Um, so uh, we would discuss all those issues. We would address those 0 0.3 uh, questions. Most probably that will not be majority. And in any case, there will be limitation. Uh, and the limitation will be number of rooms. We could do parallel sessions and number of uh, sessions per day. So uh, we know that this is uh, two, times, uh, two times three hours, meaning uh, all, or four times, uh, uh, four times one and a half hours, or uh, six times one hour, or 12 times half an hour, but that is a limitation. So uh, we will be juggling uh, with, um, with those issues uh, afterwards. So I see no requests for the floor. I take that this is uh, acceptable. And then uh, you see that af after the face-to-face uh, uh, -face meeting and all decisions uh, which also uh, may be in a form, this proposal looks kind of good, but there are shortfalls. And then those shortfalls will be addressed uh, af after decision is taken and the uh, quality of proposal or, or, or concept would be improved and then we would aim at finalizing final schedule by end of June which would then give uh, two months uh, to prepare uh, the meeting. Vlada, you are in agreement, right? Absolutely, yeah. it's just a matter of a practical uh, suggestion because the first next step is not the evaluation but the application process, right? 
So uh, as we have, uh, I, I would basically call on, on Marui to, to send the, the final document that we had, or, or uh, Tero, whoever was in the group, the final document from the last year, maybe to Fiona and Susan and their group, and then they could just fit all these things into the application form. Uh, and another thing in that is that basically not on evaluation, but again on the application form, maybe we can also ask people uh, on their priority of the duration. Because some people might say that half an hour or an hour is enough. So we can just give them an option, 30 minutes, 60 minutes, 90 minutes. Probably all of them will mark 90, but let's give it a try. Thank you. So thank, thank you for that proposal. Uh, Susan? Thank you, Chair. Um, I just wanted to um, echo um, Vlada's comment about practicalities and how we need to move quickly. We didn't discuss the um, application form or all of the elements that should be included within the application form, so that's, um, that's something that um, we'll have to have a discussion about uh, rather soon. Um, but I just wanted to, to agree with you in that respect. Okay, so thank you. Uh, I take then that we have finalized the um, uh, proposal uh, for evaluation and selection process. Uh, we will include uh, that uh, description of evaluation and selection uh, in the document of call for proposal that everybody knows up front how these proposals will be evaluated. And now we may want to return uh, to the first item on themes and I, I uh, call on Lee to see if we have a proposal uh, on, the, on the first point and the issue of uh, human rights. Lee, please. Thank you. I, I don't know if I can answer the question about the local in the first point but I defer to somebody else in that respect. But with regards to human rights, uh, we discussed it uh, quite with uh, quite a lot over there. You heard us. Uh, it, it, it evokes a lot of a lot of um, um, discussion. It's there's a lot of demand for this for this field field of work, uh, field, this 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 issue. And I don't think we tried to look at it in the context of the existing group of six bullets there, uh, particularly two and five. But it doesn't seem to fit. It doesn't fly really. It's compromised. I, that, I would put that somewhat, and there's a need to get, for it to have its own space at least at this time, at this particular time, in the process of the IGF. So uh, there's a demand for a separate, an additional bullet on internet and human rights. Uh, in addition to the year six we have there, it should be before emerging issues, in terms of the order to, um, and, and I guess next time we well, in the in the in the, in the next steps we can see exactly what demand there is for these, these issues and, and then we can re readjust accordingly. But the demand for human rights is, is very much present and I think people were very happy to see that be the case. Thank you. I hear humming. Do I? I hear it. Uh, thank you. Uh, Jivan? I think that there was also agreement that there should be some kind of reporting process uh, throughout. So uh, we can touch on, upon this perhaps over the next months or so, but uh, th there was also agreement on that. But uh, yeah, everything else was done. Yeah, no, we will get to the reporting on every session. Uh, for the moment, we're, we're just on teams. Who can tell me about uh, the formulation of the first point? Virat, please. Uh, we decided to leave it as is till May and then see based on what kind of response we receive to alter it and keep that option open. That was the sense of the house that met. Okay. I, I'm, I'm a bit, bit now mm, uncomfortable. Because I, uh, I think we should not change the rules of the game during the game, and uh, if we, 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 I think we should strive to formulate uh, the theme uh, right now, today. Uh, it would be, I think, 
we may be misunderstood if, if uh, suddenly in May we start changing themes and then why we're changing one and not changing others. I think we need to try, if we can, uh, arrive to rough consensus on, on uh, all themes that we have here uh, and uh, put them in writing, send them to all uh, uh, potential participants saying this is the framework, please uh, feel free to propose your ideas. Uh, I have reactions. Uh, let me start with um, uh, Anna first, then, then Marilyn. Uh, thank you, Yanis. Uh, well, um, on the first theme, uh, I think that after our, our discussion, uh, national policies enabling access uh, is, is the best one, at least for me. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Uh, Marilyn? I would welcome Humming in support of the Chair's proposal and support it myself with the following rationale. I think last year one of the reasons we got into so much trouble was um, not making it clear what the boundaries were and then people had workshops that didn't easily fit. If we can provide this kind of frame, frame within which proposals are submitted I think we will be doing the community and um, and the um, um, success of the IGF a great a great favor. So I would urge that we try to do this. And otherwise, people, we have such a short deadline. We are going to have to accelerate outreach to a broad community to let people know that they can submit workshops. We're already going to get lots of questions about. Wait a minute, there's only three. Blah blah blah. If they, if they send in a lot of um, workshop proposals that then have to be rejiggered, everybody's in trouble in terms of meeting the program dates. Uh, thank you, Tero. Okay, uh, thanks, Mr. Chair. Um, I, I'm a more than unhappy now with, with, with this kind of conclusion because I was already unhappy actually with, with the previous decision to, to change the, the relevance to internet governance to limit that to the area of, of this list for the coming meeting because I think it should be open-ended somehow and now if we have we are making a loop if we take the freedom to change this list after the deadline for the submissions is over so uh, it will be even more strange and uh, I'm happy to leave this kind of open but but I would like that we make this bottom up not the top down if we in the in the submission form state that everything has to be uh, relevant to the, this list of seven issues or areas it's a kind of top-down approach and if then after that we say that okay we may even change this list afterwards then I'm more than unhappy. Uh, thank you, Ted. No, uh, th this is why we're uh, trying to finalize the list. Uh, I, I would not agree with your um, saying that this is a top-down. Actually, we, we uh, made attempt of um, uh, com compiling or clustering uh, themes which were submitted by community. We cannot go with the 55 uh, themes uh, to the meeting uh, saying that this is, this is how it is and this is very good. There should be some kind of prioritization structure because we have limitations and, and that, is, that is what we do. And that does not prevent um, people from uh, submitting uh, their uh, uh, proposals based also on sub-themes which are not listed here on the screen but which you have in your in your computer uh, in this file which was sent. There are many other sub-themes which fit in, in those uh, main themes uh, in. Uh, Michael and then and then Ms. Chen. Just a facetious comment. I personally am very glad to see that internet and human rights is in a larger font size. <laughs> In my, in, 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 in my continued effort to uh, find a way to resolve the concerns about number one, could we perhaps just shorten it to just actions enabling access? Because that would, I think, again, get us to
to the practical, I would prefer practical actions enabling access, but shorter is better. So actions enabling access. Ms. Chen. Thank you, Yanis. Uh, just uh, one observation about the inserting uh, number six into this uh, themes. Uh, it's always my idea that human rights is a big notion uh, which is encompassing and uh, it touches upon many uh, elements uh, uh, in our social life. And uh, here, if we consider the previous six themes, we can see that human rights is a cross-cutting, is of cross-cutting nature. It touches upon different topics. So it seems to me that now uh, the, the, the set out is not so logic if we insert the number six here. But I can also see the majority of the, or many colleagues uh, want to keep it. But it's, uh, I'm, I can leave it with it, but I'm not happy with it. This is the, my observation. And uh, plus that, uh, besides that, I think there are also other issues which deserves our special attention, which has been neglected, uh, such, ca such as the managing critical internet resources, which has always been a very good topic, especially under such uh, the, the current circumstances. And uh, this issue uh, need, deserves our uh, further attention uh, at IGF. Uh, if possible, I would like to propose that uh, insert another item uh, titled as Managing Critical Internet Resources. Thank you, Jim. So thank you, thank you, uh, Ms. Chen. I, um, I appreciate uh, your, your flexibility, and, and I think that what we're trying to do here is to find, find the balance that everybody feels equally and happy, or equally happy, uh, since we cannot make everybody happy, so that means equally unhappy. Um, the, maybe we could uh, come back and uh, talk a little bit more about uh, human rights, specifically those colleagues who have suggested that uh, human rights should be prominently mentioned as a, as a specific theme. There were a number of, of uh, both from governments, from civil society, from uh, 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 intergovernmental organizations. Uh, on, uh, can we try to close the first one? Uh, the, um, first point, actions enabling access, would that be uh, something uh, which would which would uh, be acceptable? Um, Igor? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I'm not sure that I understand correctly what does it mean, actions. Uh, I can I can find in another words like movement or or speaking or uh, what does it mean actions <laughs> uh, policies it's it's okay local policies okay even public policies could reflect the idea uh, it's first I think and the second um, uh, the we really lose the, this point about uh, critical internet resources. Thank you. Uh, my suggestion is uh, to keep as it is the first. Thanks. Yeah. Um, okay. May, may I now um, uh, suggest that we uh, uh, suspend this discussion for a uh, uh, few minutes. Our honorary chair has obligation outside uh, the palais, and I would like to uh, ask uh, uh, him to uh, address the mag uh, with the, uh, for him closing remarks. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, uh, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Chairman. Uh, actually, uh, dear colleagues, uh, dear friends, uh, it's been uh, this is my first time in mag meeting, and I how. Uh, got uh, really much a pleasure uh, to be here uh, with you in that uh, mag meeting and uh, I'm gonna follow the uh, forthcoming ones of course uh, since I'm gonna uh, probably 
uh, most probably I'm going to chair the IGF uh, on uh, September uh, on behalf of Turkey. Uh, 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 for, the, for the time being, I have to leave early because I have an appointment out of Pale. Uh, so, uh, uh, thank you very much uh, for everything. Uh, for, uh, and I have seen uh, very uh, fruitful discussions here. Uh, I hope uh, uh, we're going to see uh, the fruitful outcomes of all those discussions very soon. Uh, and uh, I wish uh, a safe uh, trip back home to everyone. So, uh, I'm going now and uh, uh, I have an appointment out of Palais and uh, tomorrow I'm going to go home and uh, hope to see you uh, in the next meeting. Okay. Right. So thank you. So thank you, Dr. Ahmed, for all your support and, and um, uh, we uh, certainly will do our best to fulfill all your expectations. Now coming, coming back to the uh, to the uh, our discussion about uh, points, um, the we we had we had really really man, many uh, uh, thoughts, uh, and um, at one point uh, we came to a conclusion that maybe uh, national policies enabling access uh, at that point uh, seemed. Um, uh, appropriate. Then we tried, not everybody was uh, overly happy, but then we tried again and, and we, are, we are back to the, to the point that we, we do not have really consensus, uh, even rough one. And uh, uh, let me try again now, uh, for the, also for the sake of time, uh, to propose, to review uh, that proposal, uh, National Policies Enabling Access. Uh, and and um, and the body language of some of some of you s tells me that that might fly. And Virat, will you confirm that? I think, Mr. Chairman, I think I would just just spend 30 seconds on this. The words, the word policy was used because we wanted the governments to come and discuss this stuff with other participants on what's working. Um, we said local policies because several of us believed, and the list that was thrown up showed that national and local policies were the most important in getting this going. But there are comments about regional policies. If this is going to be a main theme and will translate itself either into a main session or a series of workshops, then people should have a broad uh, subject, as has been suggested from the floor, to submit proposals for regional, national, uh, and global dialogue. People will come and say what they have to. We should not make it top down. So we can try a hum for just policies enabling internet access and one for national policies. And depending on the hum, we should then close this. We can try first with policies enabling internet access. OK, and what's another point? <laughs> so the culture is not still present here. We need we need to exercise maybe over week, uh, over lunchtime. Uh, Michael, please. Let me try another hum. Uh, the word I keep hearing is best practices. So perhaps we need policies and practices enabling access. I don't know if I hear any hums for that. Peter, you asked for the floor a while ago. My best. OK. Uh, well, very shortly, uh, national policies enabling access. Uh, that's my choice. And uh, your assessment about setting strict rules, uh, I fully uh, agree with that. We don't change the rules during the game. So thank you. We're still on the on the first one. We're we're tr desperately trying to um, uh, to conclude. Uh, Robert, do you want to speak on the first one? Uh, I believe that uh, we need to keep a local or uh, regional or national access policy because it's allowed us to consider the um, best practice. Uh, in this regard, I think we should be 
more um, concre concretely uh, we need to address uh, specific uh, issues um, rather than very common topics. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Hassan. I heard the word and I think it's commonly used uh, public policies and public policies would be acceptable for any whether on a global or on a local level. So public policies enabling internet access I very strongly echo and support uh, local policies. The uh, main idea also was to ensure that we amplify government participation and they would have a lot to share and tell if we talking about policies either about broadband plans or access or any other related efforts. This also encapsulates national and regional initiatives. Thank you. Coming, coming from the governmental side, I uh, clearly uh, know that uh, all government representatives would uh, be delighted to speak about public policies. So that that maybe is, uh, and public policies, by the way, uh, certainly are, are uh, local, national, but equally public policies might be uh, regional and international if there is a possibility of agreement in the, in, in the room. So, uh, public public policies, would that, would that fly? Public policies uh, enabling access? Public policies enabling access? Public policies enabling access? <laughs> so, I, I take that as agreement. <laughs> Good. So we have we have agreement on the point one. Now let's let's address two outstanding issues. Uh, one is uh, internet and human rights, which was proposed as a separate topic, and one uh, which uh, was raised uh, that there no explicit mentioning of um, the uh, uh, critical resources, and on on the. On the last one, I would say uh, there is clearly home for that, and we know where this issue will be uh, discussed in depth at the very high level in the plenary meeting, and that is under uh, theme point number four. So that will be the one where we will be talking about IANA function evolution, where we'll be talking about ICANN evolution, where we'll be talking about enhanced cooperation, where we'll be talking about WSIS review, and, and also a future of IGF. So that is the, the home. And, and there is no ambiguity about it. So the, the, the question is uh, whether that is satisfactory uh, as as a as a point, uh, Mr. Lee. Mr. Chairman, uh, I think uh, you are right. Uh, maybe is uh, the number four is the home for the discussion, but I think it's uh, because uh, you know I'm a new Mac member, and also I, I believe that so many newcomers for the IGF meeting, so maybe they will feel confused how to discuss the the critical inf infrastructure or critical resource just in the, the future of the internet ecosystem. So I think it's, um, it's a little bit not very clear. But I think this year and also maybe in the, the year after this year is, is very, very important to discuss the, the, the end function of, of some, some organizations, internationalization. So, so I think it's, uh, that number four is too generic. Thank you. Mr. Chen. Thank you, Janice. As you have uh, repeatedly uh, mentioned, that uh, the managing critical internet resources actually is one of the most important topic in previous uh, IGF, and now. 
because there's some uh, new situation developing, and uh, I think this issue should not be uh, sidelined, and uh, it deserves our special attention. And uh, I do not see that uh, colleagues would, uh, any colleague would, uh, how to say, oppose to that, oppose to uh, discussion uh, on this topic, uh, on this issue. So I. Th because it's it's already in the previous <laughs> IGF as the main uh, sub themes, and so maybe it's uh, it's preferable that uh, we uh, insert a new uh, theme as uh, managing inter uh, critical internet resources that make it uh, very clear and uh, uh, giving us sending out the information that we need to pay attention to this issue. Thank you. So thank you. Any reaction? There, there were very strong proposals uh, about human rights. Uh, I would like to hear uh, hear arguments. Uh, again, I would not like to, to be uh, in a position of arguing with, with all of you rather, rather than listening to your discussion. Uh, Hossam, please. Basically, I think one of the major uh, confusion we have uh, for the group that was not with the themes group is that when we did the themes and tracks, we had sub-themes. And where in the sub-themes, it was clear where we find the human rights, where we find the critical infrastructure, etc. So maybe once again, maybe Subi or uh, someone help us uh, uh, remembering the sub-themes that we talked about and so this maybe bring together the situation to a clearer uh, position. Thank you. Thank you, Andriet. Um, um, thank you, Chair. Um, I actually wanted to, to as, as one being closed, public policies, because I, I, I mean, we were trying very hard back here not just to hum not harm, we try to say no. And, and I'll, I mean, I won't belabor the point, but public policies um, limits the discussion to what governments do. And, and I think in the IGF, we have a multi-stakeholder approach. So I, you know, a little bit cautious about that. I don't understand why we can't just have policies enabling internet access, colon, local, regional, and global. Um, on the, the, the human rights issue, um, I think that um, human rights is is definitely going to feature into all the other um, other themes. So not not disputing that at all. But what we felt in our subgroup is that we it was important. The IGF um, has adopted human rights. It's it links the IGF to other UN agencies and 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 to the Universal Declaration. It sent an important message. And, and there are many different aspects of human rights. So having that main session, or that main theme, sorry, it's not a session, um, sends that message. I don't think that that contradicts the fact that human rights will feature into the other themes. Um, and in fact, uh, having a, a focus on human rights means we can really synthesize and gather all the um, discussions um, around human rights in content creation, for example. So I don't think there's a contradiction there, and I think it's a sufficiently important um, theme um, for us to give it that prominence, and also not to backtrack. And I know that there's not, uh, I know there are different perspectives on this, but I think it's a, it's a message that we've been sending as the IGF in the last two years, that we really care about human rights, and it would be a pity to, to lose that. So I, I, I strongly um, emphasize that we keep it. And then just with regard to other comments, I think we should remember, um, unless things have changed, that the themes that we develop as MAG um, do not preclude proponents of sessions to submit w proposals on other topics. So I think that, that, that's, I'm not, Tara, I'm not sure if you were concerned about that, but I think that's very important. That's been a, an ethic and a principle in the IGF that the MAG provides guidance, but we also allow the IGF community to propose sessions on any other or new or emerging um, topic. Uh, thank you, Anit. Uh, Paul? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I wanted to actually sympathize with your uh, 
um, concerns about wanting to change the game on the fly, I think that would send out a, a horrible message coming from this group. I also believe that this is not being put in any kind of a top-down effort. In fact, all the discussions we have here from all the fantastic people from all the different places around the world and in different areas shows that we are we are very much in keeping with a bottom-up and open way of, of, of forming these, these, these kinds of topics. I would like to echo Henriette, our colleague Henriette's um, concerns about the first theme. I believe that I think, I believe there are other issues besides just public policy that can be talked about in enabling access. I could very much live with the idea of policies enabling access and the colons and the rest, uh, the colon and the rest of the words she uh, she put behind that. I think that would be, be quite fitting. The word policy is there, and I hope that governments would see that that would obviously include them uh, as part of this. It's. I'm actually also very happy to see point number six uh, put onto this list. These two seemingly simple words, human rights, which are so huge, and there has been so much discussion on this over the years, and it is there, and I, I'm, I'm pleased uh, personally to see that it is there. Um, I think that other issues that would, would come up can be put in any other one of these topics, um, but there is an overarching message here that human rights is taken seriously uh, within this forum and should be able to be discussed inside this forum. The last point that I wanted to make was on point number four, because, Mr. Chair, when you actually gave me the sub-pieces of what that included, which very much relates to my own, <laughs> uh, the business that I do daily outside of this, this room, um, I realized where it fit, and, and, and perhaps I'm, I'm, I'm supporting our colleague's uh, message here that this may be a little bit too broad, because I wouldn't have seen what you had mentioned as being the sub-pieces of this. Perhaps what's, what's uh, uh, not meshing with me is the word IGF and then the future of the Internet ecosystem because what you've listed as those sub-themes there underneath that, I'm, I'm finding it hard to believe how you would relate IGF to those because they are very much components of Internet administration, uh, what you've listed there. So um, I, I'm sorry at this time I don't have a suggestion, but I think that we can work a little bit more on, on item four. Thank you. Thank you. I, I, the, the explanation is very simple. That is, uh, IGF is a platform where all those issues are discussed, and that is a direct link. Um, uh, we have 40 minutes remaining, uh, and I really want to get to the to kind of a conclusion. Uh, Jivan, please. Actually, I thought that we, we had even concluded most of the issues, so I was, I was surprised that even we were bringing some of these uh, back up, um, public policies, enabling perhaps just enabling access, but uh, fine, whatever, for that one. But um, uh, for, it, you know, I don't see these things as uh, folders into which you put files. I see them as tags, uh, and then, you know, it, they all go, they can all intermingle their you know, it's gonna go into different paths, and then we can mesh them together. So, just uh, a, a, a way to look at things, perhaps a change into way how we look at this. Uh, thank you, thank you, uh, Paul. Paul Wilson. I was actually going to make a similar comment. Um, it's late after a long discussion, but I really find that this is a heavyweight uh, process. We're getting bogged down in wording. Um, it's frustrating. It's happened before, I know. Um, and I just wonder how important it is to have this discussion, whether whether really we're, we're just following uh, a well-worn path uh, with the idea that somehow the IGF needs to have these themes and tracks uh, put forward as, as some sort of marketing uh, message, I suppose, to tell people what the meeting is about. And, and hopefully the IGF is well known enough to know that the, for people to know that the IGF is about internet governance. And if you want to have um, at the sort of a presentation of what it's about, then a long list of of topics, I think, is very appropriate. You know, at the coming IGF, we will be talking about public policies. We'll be talking about enabling access. We'll be talking about all of these things, and we can break them up into shorter uh, topic tags. And I was going to make exactly the point that um, that if someone who is uh, wanting to submit a session proposal 
simply has a list of topics and they can tick the topics that apply, then those topics will, will be populated with uh, many, many proposals and they can be accessed uh, through the website in a, in a way that actually shows that under any one of these topics uh, there will be plenty, plenty of things to be, to be discussed. Um, I just find that, um, that we're, frankly, I think we're kind of wasting time and, uh, and we're overemphasizing and creating a very heavyweight top-down process where it's, where it's actually not needed. Thanks. Thank, thank you, Paul. Uh, again, I'm in your hands, and as I said, what we need to do, this is a balancing act. Once again, it's not top-down, and I do not accept that this is a top-down process. This was, uh, this is an attempt of cluster, and and then put the tag or label uh, on the cluster uh, from the 50 plus proposals which were uh, uh, given by the community in the answering of our call for proposals. What should be addressed? I think it is unfeasible to go with a list of 50 plus uh, themes and sub themes like in the one list. Uh, people may get confused, and, and uh, so there sh we should put some kind of structure, and this is what we're trying to do. So uh, we're, uh, we, I, I hear what you say, and, and my experience also show uh, uh, that uh, we may spend hours and hours uh, of discussing whether that is a legal text or, or conceptual questions, uh, but um, uh, people will do things they want to do anyway. And, and, and but again. You see, if we go out of this room, uh, that 95% uh, uh, are happy and 5% are unhappy, so we're, we're setting up ourselves for, for failure. So what we need to find is a formulation which makes everybody equally unhappy. Because it is impossible to get everybody equally happy. Again, this is from my experience. and and, and uh, this is where we're trying to do, and, and uh, I, I, I want to hear those who spoke in favor of uh, human rights at the beginning of, of this discussion uh, to come and try to convince those who say we don't need a specific mentioning of human rights, because it is not up to me to, to argue with, with those who say no. I want to hear those who, who propose that, that why this is so important, and try to convince those who are not convinced. The same applies for, for uh, uh, critical resources. It was uh, not on, on the table, uh, never been on the table, nobody asked for it. It was asked after human rights notion was introduced. Again, uh, it is very legitimate to, to raise this concern because that is an issue which has been on the agenda and will remain on the agenda. It was not explicitly mentioned. I explained where that would be, but that would be mentioned. It uh, seems that this is not, not uh, uh, sufficient, so that is why we're spending this time in, in discussing whether that will change something in uh, intentions to submit proposals on any of those issues. I, I, would, I would bet my own money saying no, it will not change anything. Nevertheless, we need to go out, uh, all, of us, all of us, convinced that this is the best outcome we could get today. Uh, Fiona. Yes, thank you, Giannis. I think, um, you know, my preference on the first bullet would be to actually go with what Henriette proposed, but I think to move things forward, I'd be willing to accept the list as is on the table um, currently right now. I do think for those that don't see themselves in these criteria or would look for somewhere else to submit proposals, again, I offer the idea that when we do the uh, workshop proposal request form, we include these seven items, and then we also include a number eight, which is an other. And then when we're evaluating the proposals, we then could naturally group them into the ones that were relevant. And if for some reason we have a proposal that doesn't cover that, we can deal with that when we meet in May. Uh, Susan? Thank you, Chair. Um, <clears throat> I, just, I just wanted to also um, express support uh, for what? Um, I'm sorry. Yvonne and, and Paul had mentioned, um, I also... I can't hear you. Sorry, can't... Is this on? Is this thing on? Okay. Um, 
also had a very difficult time trying to place things into files. I, I think that a tagging methodology is um, is something that maybe we should consider for for next year. Maybe we can have a discussion about that next year. Um, but for the time being, acknowledging all, all the work that's been done. Um, just would like to reserve that option. <laughs> Uh, thank you, Ms. Chen. Senator Janice, uh, nothing more, just talk about uh, my proposal uh, about inserting uh, one more theme, managing critical internet resources, since uh, uh, no uh, colleague has raised any opposition. So I consider this a general agreement uh, because this is a topic has been discussed and will remain on the table in any sense. So uh, as a chairman, would you please just exercise your power to uh, insert this uh, uh, new item? Thank you. So thank, thank you, Ms. Chen. I already see a number of flags up, uh, and I'm, I know what is coming. Let, let me, uh, since really we have a half an hour to go and uh, still a few issues to discuss, let me uh, give a try uh, to uh, a compromise proposal uh, which, um, again, uh, I, I think would address uh, those concerns which have been raised here and um, maybe um, would help us move on. And that is uh, to delete uh, point number six and uh, uh, add a point uh, in point number one uh, enhancing digital rights and trust and uh, uh, not mention and, and do not change any anything else uh, in in the text uh, number uh, would uh, I would suggest as a compromise and uh, taking into account everything which was said here uh, that we would formulate Point number five, enhancing digital rights and trust, and delete point number six, and remain, uh, and, and uh, that would be uh, seven points, uh, sorry, six points on the agenda, six tags on the agenda. So, Robert, please. The question of human rights violations uh, on the Internet is key because there's a violation occurring uh, worldwide and we must respond to it. Otherwise, uh, it uh, threatens uh, the integrity of the Internet. I, would, I think that it would be a mistake to remove it, to delete it. Thank you. I take back my, my proposal. I take back my proposal. Now then, let us let us uh, try another another way. Uh, would we agree to add, uh, as uh, Ms. Chen proposed, uh, critical internet resources? Maybe not as a spe specific point, but add it uh, uh, in point four future of internet ecosystem including critical internet resources uh, Igor um, thanks uh, um, I think it, it is uh, very <coughs> important uh, uh, to, to focus on on uh, infrastructure on administration and regulation uh, on this level uh, will be able to talk about resilience and, and transparency. Um, I, I would rather support the suggestion to add a new topic than uh, to put it into number four, since number four is 
to white uh, uh, critical resources uh, worth to focus on it. Yes. Uh, thank you. Uh, uh, Matthew, you are raising your hand. Thank you, Chair. Um, I'm, I'm a little lost in where we are at the moment, um, but let me just kind of say what I was going to say. Um, I uh, like the list as it stands at the moment on the screen, not, the, not what we've just been discussing, but as it stands. And if there's any way that we can move forward with that um, and addressing the issue of public policies by just removing the word public um, and going with policies enabling access. Thank you. Uh, thank you. We cannot because there is a opposition to that. We need to find a compromise. Uh, Uh, Izumi, you were asking already a while ago. Thank you, Chair. Um, first, I'd like to support what Fiona suggested to have other, which may, because um, oh, I have seen several proposals last year that doesn't really fit to the given theme, but still they are relevant to the Internet governance. Um, for the First item, I, I'm, I have problem with the public, but I can't really put some alternative yet. Um, I'd like to see something. Um, on the human rights issue, yeah, I thank you, Yanis, for you taking back, because um, I think it's a standing out kind of important issue. And last year, we had human rights, freedom of expression, and the free flow of information as one track. So I think still to keep this human rights is continuation from the last years um, and I, I'd like to support that okay the question then is uh, whether um, uh, whether, whether uh, Ms. Ms. Chen whether, whether you would support if there would be uh, a separate item which would uh, just say internet critical uh, critical internet resources uh, would you be ready to accept everything else? So, Ms. Chen would be ready to accept everything else if we have a specific point on critical internet resources and the rest stays as is. Would that fly as a proposal, uh, Fiona? I guess my only question then would be what would be the difference between that and number four? Uh, the num number four is broader than just uh, critical internet resources. Number number four uh, is also about uh, organizational uh, arrangements. Uh, it is not just about uh, managing of, um, for instance, domain name systems or or uh, 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 numbers, uh, parameters. So it is it is much much broader political notion. And as a compromise, as, as you heard, there would be uh, readiness to accept specific point number six as, as it is now, Internet and Human Rights. If there would be point on critical Internet resources, that is not new. We have been, we have had that every year in a row. Uh, please. So I think I don't have a problem with seeing the words critical in that resources. I just think it can be captured in number four. So if it's the need to see the words, why can't it be IGF and the future of the internet ecosystem, including critical internet resources? I just don't see the need to do two topics of the same thing when and even in the explanation, the new edition is quite clearly a sub-theme of the broader theme. That's really, really uh, 20 minutes and ticking. Um, Uh, Hendong. I think, uh, uh, Mr. Chairman, I think it's okay to add the, the critical infrastructure uh, into the number four, but, but I have another uh, comment about number six. So, you know, as a as a professor, you know, I from the scientific point of view, I, I don't think that it is necessary to add the uh, number, number six, because, you know, 
human rights mean many things. So access in that is human right. Use the content is human right. And I also use my my localized domain name to to access in that is human right. So it's it's not a parallel issues. It's a vertical issues. I I, I, I suggest maybe you can just uh, recover your suggestion yeah, to add at the uh, right into number five in the digital right and trust. Thank you. Uh, uh, please, uh, uh, I'm, sorry, I, I'm still learning the names. <laughs> Andrew. Um, uh, thanks. Um, in terms of the first one, public policy enabling access, public is to me is very uh, government government oriented. And again, like I said, we need to emphasize on the need of um, small island developing states that need a lot of help in terms of developing policies. Some of these um, developing island states, they do not have ICT policies. They simply don't. So who is going to help them? So these are the regional organizations that sort of help them. So if you're, if you're just saying public, it's just focusing on governmental, but not focusing on just sort of the regional aspect. In relation to internet and uh, sorry, in relation to internet and human rights, um, in the era of climate change, I mean, most of the developing countries would probably be underwater, like for example, Kiribati, Tuvalu. So we need to look at the human rights aspect because I think one of my uh, colleagues mentioned the displacement of uh, some of these people. I mean, where are they going to go? What's going to happen to their infrastructure, internet infrastructure, and all? So. I think that this is something very important. So I, I suggest that we keep number six and we delete public and we just put, I uh, just have policies enabling access. Kossi, vous avez demandé la parole. Did you ask for the floor, Kossi? I give you the floor. Merci beaucoup, Président. Thank you very much, Chairman. Well, what, are, what we're saying now creates a lot of confusion because to have the idea of Internet governance accepted in our country, we have to demystify the situation and to speak specifically about what the population can benefit from when it uses the internet and what Kim just talked about namely the use of critical resources we have to integrate this with the global integration of future ecosystems I'm also not really happy with the fact that we are somehow stratifying human rights and the internet as if they're separate issues and when I look at the courses given in, in, in universities in our countries I think that will be much more effective if we include all of this under agenda item 5 I think everyone will benefit from that thank you so maybe, maybe African continent speak, speaks uh, on, on behalf of all of us and what, what Kosi just said was to attach a notion of human rights to uh, point number five and critical internet resources to point number four. Uh, would that would that be acceptable? No. No. Look, I. I. Um, I think. I think we have reached today the limit. I think we are stuck in in. Um, uh, in the formulations where uh, no one wants to show flexibility and I really regret that and uh, what what uh, what are the consequences of our inability today agree on on these formulations is that uh, we need to bring that online and uh, uh, online means a number of um, uh, circles uh, of uh, exchange of views formulations and uh, attempts to reach agreement by silent procedure 
And since we were planning to, uh, or we are attempting to send out a call for proposals by end of next week, uh, I'm afraid that we may not uh, be able to do that if we do not have an agreement. And uh, so I, I really want to uh, want to appeal and, and see if we can um, uh, show proper flexibility and uh, uh, as I see we have only two options here either we uh, uh, agree uh, mentioning explicitly two uh, two lines separately internet and human rights and a separate line uh, the critical internet resources uh, remaining text stays as is, or we uh, formulate point number four, IGF future internet uh, ecosystem, uh, including uh, critical internet resources, and point number five, we formulate enhancing digital trust and human rights. So I see that these are two viable sort of solutions uh, that we need to look at. Uh, Jivan? I still think that the, the rigidity uh, might come from our uh, viewing these things as very fixed uh, things that we need to kind of fill. You know, perhaps two, two is going to have, you know, two, 200 proposals and three is going to have 20 proposals. They're going to fill each other uh, na naturally and organically as, uh, as needed. Um, if, if these are the two choices, uh, uh, Mr. Chair, then I would vote for the first one. Uh, as you have uh, said, critical internet resources has been a topic that has been on the agenda every year in a row. It has been the reason why the internet governance issue was became the issue it became during the WISIS process. So um, it sh perhaps it should be as a, as, a, as, a, as a separate point there, but I wouldn't uh, move human rights from, from where it is right now. I think that it is something that we need to keep and, and, and build on. Thank you. Thank you, Subi. Mr. Chairman, there was a third option that was proposed during the discussion when the group met. It was suggested that point number five uh, uh, be rephrased as enhancing human rights and digital trust. I think that is a viable option and critical in internet resources get reflected really well in three and four. Um, I think that is something that we can explore and work with. Uh, there was also another suggestion where, where they said that we could have human rights and place right on top and say that this is a cross-cutting theme just like the capacity building track and regional and national IGF track. It does not need to be mentioned as point number six separately if that is something that is causing so much agony. Uh, thank you. Peter? Thank you, Yanis. Uh, I I have a feeling that we are in the mode of uh, treaty discussion. Uh, I would like to remind you that we are the MAG. We are discussing uh, an Internet Governance Forum for 2014. So I would like to ask you to be flexible and be in the spirit of the Internet Governance Forum. So whatever you s suggest, Chair, should it be option one, option two, it comes to the same thing. Bill? Thank you. I, <laughs> time has passed. So uh, let me try to return to uh, I'll just say where I um, I would say that the critical, I, I would say for four, it should just be critical internet resources and the internet ecosystem and leave human, internet human rights at so, six. Thank you, Will. You don't need to say if... if uh, uh, sorry that I, I didn't give you a floor before. Uh, your flag was up and... and uh, uh, Robert. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I think that the topic uh, Internet and Human Rights uh, can be uh, combined with uh, the fourth, um, uh, fourth point, uh, but we can formulate uh, this point as uh, the Internet and Human Rights enhancing digital trust. Thank you. Uh, 
Mike. Just a couple points. Um, we don't hum very well, but after the initial proposal on critical internet resources, I heard a lot of grumbling. So I think there is a lot of opposition to inserting that in that level. We did not have it as a theme last year. Um, if you look at the sub-themes under number four, we have much more specific language that deals with the various uh, critical resources, and I think that will certainly bring people to the meeting if they were looking for some reason to come. Uh, we've already reached that community. Paul Wilson said something very important, which is that these are really part of marketing, and we want to have a few crisp themes so that people can convince their organization to fund them to come to this meeting. We don't want a laundry list. We don't want confusing terms. We want things that they can point to and say, look, I have to be there because they're talking about access or they're talking about human rights. So I would uh, also uh, comment that uh, I, was, I was involved in the INET meetings, which were held in the 90s and the early 2000s. And one thing we did is we, we ended up with too many things as our themes. And in the end, nobody thought they had to be there. So I would, again, focus on shortening these. And I would, in, and definitely, I would second what Subi said. In our little breakout group, the second choice, and a very strong second choice, was in turning five into enhancing human rights and digital trust. My concern about the present formulation that's on the screen is that right now, if you look at the sub-themes under digital trust, they deal with privacy and security and many issues that would fall under human rights. So right now, we've got a, a overlapping topics. Combining them as enhancing human rights and digital trust, I think, should meet the need. And, uh, and making sure that it's clear in the sub-themes and the, the details under four that we are talking about critical resources should be just sufficient. So thank you, Fatima. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I have a question. Uh, are there seven the limit of the sub theme? theme? Because the, the answer is no. I prefer a, a new separate point to internet cri critical resources and its evolution, for example, and or something like that, that and maintain the, the point of internet and human rights and a separative, separative point. I don't know if we have a limit of sub them. Thank you. The limit is self-imposed, and um, uh, the, the whole exercise was to cluster uh, the themes proposed by uh, the community in in a set which uh, this group would feel comfortable with and would recommend uh, to the rest of the community as a guidance uh, for uh, the uh, selection or uh, yeah for the selection of the um, uh, workshops or, or um, uh, events during the meeting. So it used to be four. Uh, it may be five. Of course, it may be ten, but then we're losing completely focus. And uh, uh, whereas more more than uh, five already, it is a bit unfocused. Uh, nevertheless, I am in your hands. I, I want to uh, hear your agreement uh, on uh, whatever you can agree. With. Uh, Patrick. Yana yeah, said a minor point on um, number four inter IGF in the future of internet ecosystem. Um, it's grammatically incorrect because it should be the internet ecosystem, but um, I get the impression that, that, that the term internet ecosystem read together refers to the technologies of the internet, whereas a lot of the writing and reading that we're seeing about this is really in the context of the internet governance ecosystem. And so just a question as to what the, uh, you know, what the intent is, and I think we could probably make a case for either way. Uh, and then finally, I would suggest that on these things, uh, Yanis, I, th I think we're probably, I get the sense anyhow, that we're reaching a point where uh, 
you could probably take some of this under advisement and use your discretion in in in, in deciding this. And we can we can stay in, in reach con consensus. I'm happy to stay all night, but uh, some of these things could potentially uh, fall within the uh, within the chair's discretion. I think. Uh, we're, we're talking about bottom-up uh, and not top-down process and chair's discretion may be interpreted especially at the first meeting and the first occasion as uh, uh, imposing of uh, uh, authority. I'm very careful about it. Um, so I, I think uh, I will use uh, the, my discretion of the chair uh, to stop debate here. We will not reach consensus today, it's, it's obvious. Uh, what we can try to do is I can uh, just appeal and invite those who are interested uh, after this meeting uh, maybe stay another 15-20 minutes in the room uh, somewhere in, in, in that corner because that was not a very uh, lucky corner uh, and try to reach a consensus uh, that we could put online already tonight and see whether we can agree. As I said, we need to get agreement before we send out uh, the uh, call for proposals. We, we cannot send out call for proposals without agreement on, on these uh, clusters that we will be uh, addressing. We need to find that formulation. That is point number one. Uh, and what, what we need also to uh, uh, reach uh, agreement is on um, uh, the uh, formats, what we could propose uh, here, and, and uh, uh, I alluded already to uh, potential formats, and this was discussed yesterday, that there, there might be um, uh, the main session remains, right? I think that this is inevitable, we, we need to go for main session. Um, the, but then in the workshops we, we may have uh, workshops which would be one and a half hours one option and uh, or one hour we can have round tables with a one and a half hours option and one hour option and we have we can have these speedy uh, uh, sessions with a half an hour or even uh, five minutes these slam slam sessions which would be then clustered in one longer uh, session Uh, and um, uh, that is um, that is what I, I recall from from the previous uh, discussions that we had yesterday. Uh, Andriet. Thank you, um, Janis. It's been. I'm sorry, but it, 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 this my flag has been up for a long time. Um, so I'm a little bit concerned about that. Maybe I need to sit near the front. I think we're actually very close to consensus, and I think uh, you've done a, an excellent job, and I think we've done an excellent job. So I think we should should recognize that. I, I, I agree with the points made by Jivan and by Peter. Um, I recognize that we, we, we can't chop and change, but we also need to, to, to allow for for some um, gelling of these proposals and some flexibility around that. I think we should also remember that these themes are not necessarily all going to be represented by a main theme or a main, sorry, a main session at the IGF. They just are themes to guide the IGF community. Um, the point I wanted to make is that I think that the, that the compromise proposed uh, to include critical internet resources as well as human rights is a very good one and I actually think after the Brazil meeting we might have really um, quite quite interesting um, um, content to discuss under critical internet resources so I actually support the idea to add it um, keep in mind that emerging issues is not really a theme so we still would only have have seven themes and then just with regard to the proposal to to link human rights to digital trust um, I mean I can understand the rationale for that but um, one of the, the aspects of, of human rights and the internet that's being increasingly discussed, particularly by developing country governments, is, is the internet and human rights in the sphere of economic, social and cultural rights. 
and 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 those are somewhat outside of digital trust. Digital trust is is, is very closely linked to freedom of expression and privacy and security. So I think there are different um, aspects. So I, I, I would, my, my compromise that I'd be very comfortable with would be adding critical internet resources and um, keeping human rights. And then I think having um, some flexibility to not change anything substanti substantially, but to make sure that we express the messages and the themes we're trying to get across as clearly as possible. And, and then just finally, um, I think something that is important is um, that the evaluation process, we need to, if we are going to invite the community to um, submit, as Fiona reminded us, um, sessions that would be ticked under other, we should then also not discriminate against those unduly in the, in the session um, evaluation process. But I think those people that work on the evaluation process in more detail can possibly um, accommodate that. And on the policy one, I think we're also so close to a compromise. I heard so many people propose um, just removing the public. Um, Anju made a very strong argument for that from a small island state perspective. Fiona had a concrete proposal. So I, I actually feel, unless there's anyone who feels very strongly, it should be public specifically, it's quite simple to just um, delete the public, keep it very short as Matthew has proposed, or just add local, global, and regional. I think we're very close, Janis. I think um, we should actually feel quite pleased with our progress. Uh, thank you, Annette. I will be pleased when everybody will, will hum loudly about one, one set of uh, sort of sentence on the, displayed on the screen. Uh, we're not yet there. Um, I would like to ask just a second a consultation with, with the Secretariat. We have reached the uh, six o'clock uh, threshold where uh, our interpreters uh, will need to be uh, recognized and thanked for, for uh, uh, help. Uh, thank you very much. And uh, we, we, if you wish, we can uh, continue without interpretation for another uh, maybe half an hour, hoping to reach agreement on the uh, on the on the text, but this will be without interpretation. Would that be okay? Fifteen minutes. Okay, fifteen minutes. Let's try in fifteen minutes. Um, okay. Uh, Andrea made the proposal uh, to uh, add point on uh, critical resources uh, to uh, the list and delete public in number one. Uh, all the rest remains unchanged. So um, now, uh, if I may ask you, put flags down, all flags down. The proposal, the proposal is the point number one, policies enabling access, point number two, as is, point number three, as is, point number four, as is, point number uh, five, as is, uh, point number six, as is, uh, point number seven, critical internet resources, point number, uh, new point number eight, as is. So thank you, we have agreement. Thank you. Andriet, nice try. So you see, this was the reason why I didn't call on you. That you speak wisdom <laughs> of, the, of, the, of the crowd. Thank you. Uh, 
is zoom in. No, no changes anymore. Yeah, of course. Which we okay. which we uh, agree. Thank you. And and then there was a, um, a grammatical correction that there should be the internet ecosystem that is already corrected. So uh, thank you for that. Let's go quickly back then uh, to those uh, proposed uh, formats of of the um, uh, of the events. Uh, Fiona. Thank you. So I didn't necessarily have an objection to the formats as you've described them in terms of the blocks of hours, but did want to have a discussion about whether or not we needed to continue to have a main session every day of the week. I know we've discussed this uh, a couple of different times about whether it was more constructive to have you know the opening ceremony, a main session on the first day, and then maybe one midweek and then one at the end, or if there was some variation of that. And I was wondering if when we would have that conversation in terms of the numbers. Um, thank you for for raising this issue. Any any immediate reaction to this uh, to the to the proposal? Not to have systematically uh, main sessions every day throughout the day, but having it in the first day, maybe then in the third day, in the in the fourth day or fifth day, whatever we have uh, op opening. Then one day no, and then other other days as well. Workshops are for workshops are interpreted or not? No, they're not. None of them? No. So we can keep up. Um so Tero, please. Uh, yes, about these main sessions, uh, linked to that is, is the question related to the you know, like the rooms or the space. And, and I think there was quite wide consensus. Is there some? No, no, please go ahead. Uh, there, there was quite wide consensus after the Bali meeting that actually we don't need the huge room for all the days. And, and in a way, that way also kind of create competition between the so-called main sessions and, and, and the workshops. And I think this might be good to discuss together with the issue of main sessions and, and whatever main name we use for that, maybe the plenary would be the alternative. Thank you. Any other comments? Any reaction? No. Okay. I think we have um, we have arrived to the uh, closure of uh, our meeting uh, of today. I think that steam is out. There is uh, one request uh, for the floor, but uh, Patrick, if I can ask you uh, no more than two minutes, maybe even one. Thank you. I'll I'll, I'll be quick. It it. Uh, um, I wanted to talk a little bit about my favorite topic, funding. <laughs> and I promise not to talk too much, but I do have some really good news. Uh, as many of you know, this has been one of the areas of, of my interest and involvement in the, in the MAG. Um, and uh, for some of the new MAG members that may not realize it, uh, the IGF raises approximately $900,000 per year. It's a very small pool of about uh, 15 or so contributors, um, and from that, um, about 25% of that money comes from Finland every year, and that money is going to stop. Uh, there's a broad need to, 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 to increase the, uh, the, the funding base. Um, the good news that I have is that we have, uh, for quite a while, been talking about using a third party, uh, the Tides Foundation, to set up a fund. The fund is actually set up. It's called the Friends of the IGF Fund. Uh, it was done in collaboration with Henriette um, and with Aisha. Um, and it's been it's been unclear for a while as to whether or not we would be able to use that money for the secretariat. Um, although we have established and, and tested the fund uh, for use, for example, last year in the in the case of Indonesia. 
Um, and there will be more opportunities to discuss this tomorrow during the open session uh, that's available during, for, for donors. But the good news that I want to share with everybody is a telephone conversation I had with Jay Posnell, who is the principal legal officer at the, at the United Nations. And he told me that he has spoken yesterday with the uh, legal director at the Tides Foundation and, has, and they've reached an understanding that there is not a need at this point in time to actually conclude a formal agreement in order to be able to deploy the funds for the benefit of the Secretariat. Um, and this can be done instead by an exchange of letters. Uh, there's apparently precedence within the UN system for this, kind of, for this kind of activity. And they'll continue to work on formalizing it. But the really good news here is that we're going to be able to use this uh, as, a, as a way to, uh, to continue to, to, to raise money and now to, to bring some money into the Secretariat. There's currently $100,000 in the fund. Um, and there's new funders uh, the last, uh, last year, uh, Facebook and Intel have um, have 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 shown that this is that this is something that can work for them. They're new contributors, um, and uh, hopefully there will be many more. So there will be more opportunities to discuss this tomorrow. And um, I won't uh, take up any more time then. But I wanted to share that good news. So thank you, thank you, Patrick. Uh, if you want to know more, please come tomorrow morning. Uh, to the open session, this this uh, uh, subject will be uh, discussed uh, in length. So, uh, I would like to um, conclude the session by thanking all of you for your uh, hard work and uh, engagement and for flexibility you showed uh, uh, during the last uh, minutes of the meeting. I think we did uh, ninety percent what uh, I was planning to achieve we have now the uh, list of uh, clusters or themes uh, for the, for the meeting and that that represents uh, forty percent of what I wanted to achieve we have um, uh, the methodology of evaluation and selection of workshops and that represents fifty percent of uh, the mm, uh, outcome I wanted to achieve and uh, the missing 10% is the overarching theme so that is there was uh, some uh, some proposals uh, uh, sort of um, uh, connecting everyone connecting people there was also a reaction that that sounds very much like Nokia uh, nevertheless uh, what I would like to to suggest maybe uh, if we would flood uh, IGF mailing list uh, with the proposals, uh, how you would see this theme in next, uh, let's say, uh, three days. And then I will use my uh, discretion as a chair uh, to propose uh, one out of those you will, uh, you will propose to the, to the mailing list. Uh, and then we will apply a uh, silent procedure uh, for that. If that's agreeable, then we can uh, proceed in that way. So thank you, and um, we will have uh, the uh, first conference call in about two weeks' time from now. Then we will have a regular uh, conference calls, and, and if uh, we can agree that that would be on Wednesdays, uh, Chengatai told me that this is a, maybe the best day we can think of and that that would be at uh, 1 o'clock uh, Geneva time uh, every, every, every time which is the, maybe not uh, the, the best one but the most optimal to reach uh, out uh, all uh, time zones because 1 o'clock uh, uh, Geneva time is early in the morning uh, in the in Americas, and it is uh, evening in Asia. The only people who suffers will be from uh, Australia and New Zealand. I I apologize already in advance, but this you are used to that already. <laughs> so. Uh, and uh, we certainly will stay in touch. And once again, uh, thank you for confidence you placed in me. It was great pleasure uh, to see uh, all of you here and looking forward to the successful outcome. Thank you. <laughs>